<laughs> well, we'd actually called the meeting to order already. We just got out of an executive session. We were discussing um, uh, employment of a public official. We'll actually have uh, something, Patty will have something to say about that um, during her report. Um, so we'll get back into the meeting. Um, announcements. Um, Patty, I will let you kind of review what we're doing on the 18th. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Council will meet at um, 4 o'clock to uh, from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock in executive session to interview candidate Dave Hale. At uh, 5 o'clock we will come out of executive session into public session so that there can be a public question and answer period for candidate Hale. Um, at 5.30 we will switch candidates and there will be a public question and answer session for candidate Dave Pazinski. And then at um, 6 o'clock, we will go into executive session again for council to interview candidate Krasinski. Uh, then we will adjourn and from 7 to 9 have the public meet and greet of both candidates, which will take place out here in this actual lobby area because every other building in this, every other room in this building is taken <laughs> on Thursday night. Oh, wow. So that's a good thing. But <laughs> okay. Any other announcements? Well, well I, I would like to say, as I commented in an email, I, and perhaps it's too late to change, but I have a concern of that the executive session is an hour, but the public session is just a half hour with each uh, chief candidate. And given, I think, how important I think this is, how people in the community feel this is important. Mm -hmm. I really would like to see the executive sessions shortened and the public sessions lengthened. And I say that I understand the need for having executive sessions because there are personnel issues that we want to keep private. Um, but I do think that it's important for people in the community to hear what council, what questions council has for candidates and to give people in the community um, more time. So I'm wondering, is it possible to say well, executive sessions for 45 minutes and and the public sessions for 45 minutes? That's, as, as I uh, stated previously, that's entirely up to council, although I don't know if Judy can that's publicly notice that at this point. What's your time frame for? I can. I mean, it's going out the other way a fair amount. I mean, I mean, I if guess we I'd started like to... the first public session at this, if I at, at the same time as scheduled, mm -hmm. right? Uh huh. And uh, just go 15 minutes. And over. then just go 15 minutes over, mm -hmm. and then the second one starting 15 minutes late and going 15 minutes over, um, then it it would it would make our time a little bit longer, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't be that much longer, so I, I don't think it, then it would have to be re, re noticed as. Mm. I mean, it, I even wonder I, with 15 minutes if we even need to worry about that. I mean, citizens might get here. F well, I guess if we started 15 minutes earlier, I think if we start earlier, if we might. start fi if we start right on time, then I don't see it as being that big of a deal. Well, what what I'd like to suggest to council <laughs> and, and Judy weigh in here is if you, if you want to do that, and and I I don't have a problem with with doing it, um, I would suggest you perhaps start your executive session 15 minutes early and keep the first public question and answer thing uh, at, at 530, but then you still can have, four, or how does that work? Five, five, to, four, to, it's at five. to 430. Uh, 445. 445. 345. We start at start, 4. Start at 345. Oh, okay. And go to, you know, simply because you're going to run into the seven to nine meet and greet and it's going to keep one of the candidates in oh. here while that's going plus the fact that I have to get up and go get the mm -hmm. refreshments to put out mm -hmm. so um, I mean I you know you don't because I, mean, I can do that I mean I'm okay. going to be here for that so it's not well okay so we're talking wait, about that would that would actually change the start time of right. the yeah. first for the executive Public. session, yes. Well, and what about, I mean, 4 to 4.45, and then, you know, we wait 15 minutes to, you know, start the public at 5, and then, you know, it does push it a little bit later. 
I, mean, I, I, guess, I think it would be I think it would simply be easier to unless council feels that they need the full hour it's simply easier to re-notice it with 45 okay. minutes apiece that I think that would be right. my preference that's okay. the simplest way yeah. so going from 4 to 445 and starting the public session at 445 to 530 and if somebody doesn't get here until 5 they still have 30 minutes right correct questions correct yeah. and the um, the way we're going to do the public and uh, the public question and answer period is similar to what um, occurred at my public forum where you're handed out uh, if you want to ask a question you're handed a random number as you come in the door and then your numbers are called in order until you run out of time and then what we could do is let's say we hand out 25 numbers and 10 of them ask questions of the first candidate you can start with number 11 on the second candidate and just keep going so that the rest of the folks have a question a chance to ask and that's the fairest way I can think of to do it for for everyone So, are we going to so have everybody somebody, would get a number like any, an option it, no what happened with, with mine was they would ask when the people were coming through the door do you feel you have a question to ask the candidate oh, I see. they would be if they said yes they would be handed a number mm -hmm. and you know if if say Zoe was number one you'd say okay number one she would stand up and ask her question if Melissa was number two you know however Mm -hmm. but the numbers are hand, handed wow. out in a random and, way. and that's when they're coming in here that's, that's when they're coming in the door you go okay. when you go open the door as they come in would you like to ask a question of a candidate yes I would here's your number I, I hate to bring this up so late but I feel like we need some kind of a facilitator I, I don't feel like council should be facilitating mm -hmm. this I don't think you should be I, just to just to manage the numbers I wonder if we could have somebody from the Committee. Oh. Well, John Gudgel was on. I mean, it seems like out of that committee, between the committee I don't and village think mediation, I bet we could find somebody. Uh, yeah, I would think yeah. between. I, I can find someone. Okay. Could between, you? Yeah, sure. Between okay. now and if I, Brian and I will work together on I it. I think John sent an email saying he wasn't going to be able to. Okay. He had a conflict, I think. Um, part of well, that. I know, I know um, who else on the committee is coming. Is TJ or Aaron Probably. or Leslie coming? Uh, Lair, uh, Maybe Jerry just, is, just send well, an email out yeah, and figure I mean, it yeah. out. Just somebody to handle it because I mean, yeah. it's not something that we it can might, really manage. We might need a couple people, somebody to be handing out the numbers and somebody. Okay. Be Are we going to meet in A and B? No, here. we'll be in here. And we'll have, it'll be similar to mine where we'll have the candidates sit up front here and Judy and I will scoot around that way mm -hmm. so that um, once everyone comes in, the candidate is still facing the audience. The other thing is, I don't need to be at the table. I can definitely do the facility. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah, that I might be better. Too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're not going to be taking notes. Yeah, no. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. okay, well, you guys work that out. Okay. Just yeah. make sure there's some help. Okay, cool. And then if if you could get get it on our website, and and if we could ask Diane to, to maybe get the change, the time change, get it onto the news website. I'll, I'll get it because I okay. I'll email it right after. Okay. <clears throat> okay okay we're back to announcements any other announcements yeah I have an announcement um, since the community <coughs> solutions conference uh, I guess earlier in uh, November December um, there's been a working group um, <coughs> that's been meeting regularly to look at ways to deal with uh, ener uh, energy reduction and uh, issues related to climate change. So um, I just wanted to let people know a few of the things that are happening. Um, uh, Community Solutions is inviting uh, a man, Mario Abilia, from Cuba, who will be here on January 18th with the showing of uh, a film about how <coughs> Cuba ha is addressing climate change. Um, then uh, Green Environmental Coalition and with Tom Clevenger uh, are work is working on uh, solid waste reduction and they will be showing a video called The Clean Bin about a family that worked to reduce its solid waste uh, and that will be February 7th. Um, Antioch College is involved in this group and they have received a grant to do a campus energy audit and uh, then there's a smaller working group that is working on um, 
looking toward Yellow Springs as a collaborative of developing a climate action plan and Oberlin uh, which has such a plan has been invited to come to the village that hasn't been set up I would expect well late January early February and when they do come I hope to have them come to a council meeting to talk about what they're doing so that's what I have to okay. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention the Arts Council's Holiday Art Jumble and uh, would encourage everybody to stop by. It's uh, open Wednesday through Sunday, 1 to 4 p.m. until the end of the year, so until the 31st. And uh, in general, just kind of a, a plug to shop local. It's a great thing to do for the holidays. Right. Uh, it's at 111 Cory Street at the gallery. Yes, definitely shop local. And there are, Little Art is showing um, kids' classic um, holiday series um, every Saturdays from, um, Saturdays at 11.30 in the morning and Sundays at 1 in the afternoon. So those are great free movies for kids. Frosty the Snowman was, um, they showed on, on Saturday. So, well, sa Saturday and Sunday. So, and I actually think they have matinees kind of going on all day. So mm -hmm. they're, they're doing some great stuff um, there just to, to get families involved and, and entertained in town. So um, anything else? Actually, I wanted to uh, thank the chamber for arranging the uh, free carriage rides. I, I w it was just amazing how many people were downtown uh, last Saturday. And uh, people were just shocked that they were free and so excited. It was all lined up. And um, I guess also we've done it before, but I want to do it again. I want to thank the village team for all the work they've done downtown, for going out of their way to support the activities and try to keep it as open as possible. It's, it looks great. Thank you. Right. Yeah, the decorations, everything yeah. looks very nice. And the so sidewalks. Yep. The sidewalks are. And the new trash. And the art cans, yeah. yeah the I've art got, cans. I've gotten a lot of emails and calls. I mean, people are excited. And I think you may say something a, I will. a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Anything uh, else? Well, I had one, and I, and I didn't know if, I, if it would fall under citizens' concerns or special reports or whatever, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it now why by is. <laughs> Awake. Awake is <laughs> still fresh. Um, I know in, in, in our country we have freedom of speech and you can kind of write what you say and so forth. But, uh, and, and, and normally I don't, I don't comment on things I see in the newspaper and so forth. But, but, but I think our, our village manager took a hit in the newspaper that, uh, she really had anything, to, nothing to do with. As you know, at our last meeting, we did uh, agree to hire an assistant village manager. Uh, this had been in the works uh, back when Mark Cundiff was the village manager, and 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 as part of his uh, exit report that he gave to the village uh, and to council, he <laughs> felt that he was overworked and that we needed an assistant. And the council did shortly after that decide that we needed an assistant. Uh, when uh, Laura Kerr, this was the village manager, we kept priding her and she did not hire one. When we had our interim village manager, uh, Kent uh, Bristow, uh, even though he's interim, he saw how the workload finally had gotten to him. And as he was was leaving he, he also mentioned to a couple of us that we need to move forward and that's what we did uh, had nothing to do with Laura's ability I mean uh, Patty's ability and so forth that was a council decision so I just wanted to reiterate that again that that assistant manager's job was a council decision not the village manager's decision and that, uh, this is how we feel that we can better serve the community, and this is how we're going to move forward. And you know, again, people can write what they want and so forth. But I personally thought that that was a hit that Patty shouldn't have to take. It's a, if to me, when people are upset with how we handle business, contact us. You know, don't 
uh, put on our employees. Our, our employees, they work for us under our direction and, and so forth. So if anyone else in the community is upset with that, give me a call as a council member. Don't, don't go to Patty on that one. So. I think that there was misinformation in that there was a lack of understanding in that letter, letter that the this, a single position was taking the role of two positions. That two positions were eliminated and that person was taking on responsibility. It, it, in some respects it's, it's a name change and, and elevating the position um, specifically at, at our desire to have a um, to have someone in training and to have someone who can step into into the manager role when the manager isn't in the office or if the manager can actually maybe take some vacation um, so yeah I mean I, I agree Jerry I you know it, it's unfortunate when you know writing letters to the editor is a good thing and it's an important thing for speech but it's unfortunate when people are uninformed and they write um, negative um, things based upon misinformation so any other announcements okay um, we'll move on to reviewing the minutes of the November or excuse me December 1st meeting page one page two page three page four page five A motion to accept. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, I abstain. <coughs> okay, uh, reviewing the agenda. Um, we have um, quite a few pieces of legislation um, to get through. Um, then it, we have some old, a couple items of old business and a couple of items of new business that I threw in more to just schedule to you know figure out when we're going to talk about those so um, should, we, should, should we talk about the charter review uh, process now that it sounds like we've got some candidates and there's no real place to like talk about like interviewing those candidates or, or how how we're going to should, old sorry old business okay yeah and then should we Add something about uh, the next step on the arts can art cans. I'm not really sure that that falls under the, <coughs> the pack. Right. Um, report out. That would have to go under old business. As okay. Well. well, there and there was actually there was a letter to the um, a letter in council packet related to solid waste and, and I thought you know I don't know if we were going to address that um, at all I mean that might be a I don't know if that's a point when where we could say something about it but um, let's you, we'll just keep it under old business we'll just keep the art cans under old business okay um, what about um, Marianne's point or concern about the drawing for the council table is it um, I, I have that as part of my presentation or my During manager's report, report. Um, if you if you want or you can do it under old business if you'd rather do it there it doesn't matter to me either way. Preference either way no I don't care let's just go ahead and put it under old business okay, okay Lori um, review the there were a couple things on the table that yeah. those actually might have been from last week too. No, no, one of them okay. was definitely um, recent. So, okay. um, uh, we had a letter from Vicki Hennessy about Morris Bean, and I think um, Patty will be addressing that. Um, concerns about the sinkholes, and Patty will be addressing that in her <coughs> manager's report. We had a letter from Reggie Stratton, but he has since revoked the request that he was making in that letter. That was one of the letters on the table. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just going to uh, leave that as it is. Just acknowledge that they made a, Antioch made a request, but they have talked to staff and and uh, revoked that request. Um, 
we had a letter from Sue Abendroth about the solid waste with raising good questions <coughs> about whether the current um, rumpy practice of two trucks doing things separately if that's the most environmentally responsible way to ex um, to collect solid waste um, and suggesting that it be turned over to the Environmental Commission um, and and I thought that when I give my environmental talk about that briefly. Uh, well I think we should probably talk about it um, as an mm -hmm. item of, of new business what, oh. right okay um, and then uh, we had a letter from um, Colin Altman, the Miami Township Fire and Rescue Chief, um, endorsing David Hale's uh, candidacy for police chief. And we had a, uh, just kind of a page from Brian about next century cities. I don't know if you want to say something more about that. It, was, it wasn't very clearly headed, so I was a little confused by right, it. Right, yeah, that, this is a good time to talk about that. So um, basically, uh, we have been asked to, you know, as part of uh, accepting the principles for Next Century Cities to give a blurb about what's happening um, in Yellow Springs. And, and from what is mentioned, you know, obviously we're in the early stages, but we do have some things that we're exploring. So uh, Patty did some work on this, uh, some members from the community access panel as well. And uh, basically I wanted to make sure that uh, it looked okay in a council because uh, sort of with our resolution that said uh, Patty will explore that partnership, we want to forward that information. Um, so basically I just wanted to make sure it looked okay to everyone and, and that we could go ahead and submit that. I don't know. I, I, I guess I wasn't, I want to be a little careful about what we're committing Patty to. Mm -hmm. Actually, Patty's committing John to that when he comes in <laughs> <Okay>. in January. <laughs> okay. so. yeah. right. But at this point, it's just information about Yellow Springs. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as, I, I, Patty thought it looked <coughs> fine, uh, community access panel reviewed it. And, um, and and again, I did some work on it as well. Uh, I, I will say uh, Columbus, Ohio just joined as well as two other Ohio cities. Um, so they're definitely getting some traction. Good, okay. Is that, I think that was it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll move on to um, public hearings and legislation. We have first reading of ordinance 2014-27, <coughs> amending the personnel policy manual regarding part-time employee health benefits. Okay, whereas section 85 of the Village of Yellow Springs Charter charges Village Council with adopting by ordinance a comprehensive personnel policy and with amending this policy as necessary by ordinance. And whereas the Village of Yellow Springs personnel manual currently has a specification regarding health care premium deductions that creates a situation that affects some employees inconsistently. <coughs> and whereas while the Village of Yellow Springs endeavors to treat all employees equitably and fairly as often as possible, now therefore the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio hereby ordains that Section 1, effective immediately, Section 303 of the Personnel Policy Manual Medical Insurance shall be amended to read as follows. Medical insurance. The village shall for all eligible full-time and part-time employees provide and pay partial premiums on a high deductible health savings account benefit plan that includes coverage for routine and preventative care and prescription drugs. Such insurance shall also cover an employee's dependents. Village employees shall contribute to the cost of medical insurance at a rate of 15% by payroll deduction. Employees may not opt to cancel their coverage to save their contribution unless the employee can show satisfactory proof of equivalent coverage from another source. Proof of su is submitted once a year to the human resource officer. No extra payment in lieu of subscription will be made if an employee, for whatever reason, does not contribute. Village employees may choose to contribute to a health savings account, HSA. Pre-tax contri contributions are made through payroll deduction and are deposited to each employee's HSA to be used by the employee and family for, for eligible medical related expenses including co-pays. Any funds left in the account upon the employee separation from the village, village or property of the employee. Section 2 this ordinance should be in full force and effect from the earliest date allowed by law. Can I have a motion please? So moved. Second. <coughs> uh, Patty will you explain this? The health care premiums for part-time employees were for, uh, based upon their, it's a fairly complicated calculation based upon their hours of, number of hours of work. 
Um, in addition to that, there were some employees who were exempt by contract or um, employees who were exempt for other reasons that are addressed elsewhere in the, in the manual. And it just made it simpler to the two employees that were um, affected inconsistently. This change just makes everybody have the same benefits across the board. And part-timers uh, are included if they're eligible part-timers. Uh, they're included the same as full-time employees. Um, the calculation, we did the calculation as far as the financial impact on the village of this, and it was $3,000 annually. Okay. Comments or questions from council? Okay. Um, comments or questions from citizens? This will be a second reading. There will be, go ahead, Sue, come on. I just have a quick question. What makes an employee eligible versus not eligible? Is there a minimum number of hours? There used to be. Now, and that was part of the problem. Um, now all eligible, all in part-time employees are eligible um, as long as they have a set schedule. So if they are, um, for instance, uh, Les, who cleans the building, has a set schedule with a set number of hours. Um, the uh, employees that are on call type of employee, they're as needed. They're not eligible for the uh, benefits because they don't have a set schedule. They get called in as needed. And those who have a what I'm getting at is if someone works two hours a week mm -hmm. and somebody else works 10 it's hours a week. It's 24 hours a week. Okay, that's, that was, yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sue. Any other comments, questions? <coughs> Bring it back to council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Askland? Yeah. Winter? Yes. And we will have another reading of this. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have the second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2014-29, accepting annual appropriations for 2015 and declaring an emergency. Okay, whereas this ordinance is adopted to make appropriations for expenses and other expenditures of the Village of Yellow Springs, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31, 2015, now therefore the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that. Section 1, to provide for expenses and other expenditures of the said Village of Yellow Springs during the fiscal year ending December 31, 2015, the following sums are hereby set aside and appropriated as follows. Section 2, that would be appropriated from the general fund. The general fund appropriations are three million seven hundred and ninety three thousand six hundred and I'm sorry eight hundred and fifty two section three that there be appropriated from the following special revenue funds that total revenue that total appropriation is one million two hundred and twenty five thousand four hundred and one section four that there be appropriated from the capital project funds that total is nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollars section five that there be appropriated from the enterprise funds that total is five million two hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. Section 6, that the appropriation from the total fund budget is as follows. The grand total is $11,161,193. Section 7, the finance director and village manager are hereby authorized to draw warrants on the village treasury for payments from any of the foregoing appropriations upon re receiving proper certificates and vouchers, therefore, approved by an ordinance of council to make the expenditures provided that no warrants shall be drawn or paid for salaries or wages except to persons employed by the authority of and in accordance with such ordinance. Section 8, the ordin this ordinance shall take effect at the earliest period allowed by law. Section 9, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency me measure immediately necessary to pre preserve the public interest and for the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the village. Wherefore, this ordinance shall be in effect immediately upon its adoption by council. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Um, Melissa, our finance director, is here. Um, this is our second our second reading of this, right? Yeah, our second reading. Um, we did, um, basically, at the last meeting, at the first reading, we didn't really ask questions or discuss since you weren't here. Council, I don't know, you know, Melissa, if you want to, if you want to say a few things, Council, if we have any questions. Um, um, I guess that the most important thing um, to watch is a result of the ordinance is something that was including, included in the last packet, which were the year-end fund balance projections. Um, these are projections of how we will begin 15 and how we will end 15. Um, with, with the various water projects, um, some of those are going to draw down the general fund um, more than what we had originally talked about in the initial budget discussions. 
Um, therefore, there are some transfers which are in the second piece of legislation um, tonight regarding the budget. Um, the transfers from the general fund into the water fund for two projects. So, um, just I want everybody to just pay close attention to those fund balance projections and just know that some of the enterprise funds we're going to have to be very careful with and have to do some creative thinking with those. So, but those did. Um, the enterprise funds did include the rate increases that were part of ordinance, I think, last meeting? Mm -hmm. Final ordinance, final rating. Mm -hmm. yes. That will take an effect in January. So those were included, those revenue projections in those fund balance projections. Okay. Council, questions for Melissa? I guess I, guess I would just ask Melissa and, and Patty, um, do we, we know we're really dipping into our reserves, mm -hmm. um, and but that you feel, given that, we're both really nervous about the budget, and we're both especially nervous considering the information that we got on House Bill Five yeah. today. Right. So, <laughs> we we're both very nervous about the budget. And I will tell you that this is the first time in my nine years on council that we have taken funds from the general fund and put them into the enterprise funds. We have been very disciplined about that um, because we feel that the enterprise funds are a business unit that needs to stand on its own. Unfortunately, those fund balances are too low and we have two major capital improvement projects that we have to do. We have, we have to do the loop completion for which we have $400,000 from the state and we have to be, we're committing to begin the, the um, water plan is um, when we borrowed from the electrical fund the general the village borrowed from the electrical fund to pay down the final debt on this building um, is there a way that the water fund could pay back the village as we think about rate increases I don't, yeah. I don't I I think it's going to depending on what happens it's really too soon to tell because we don't really know what's going to happen with the water plant how much mm -hmm. annually we're going to have to commit to that since we don't know how much it's going to cost. Yeah. So I would be afraid to commit anything too early without knowing exactly what the annual cost is going to be on our loan payments for the water and, plant. And one thing that Melissa and I've just very very briefly talked about is I'm looking for the funding for the water plant. Mm -hmm. I've been calling around to different funding agencies and um, a couple of them have already said, you know, you're not gonna be eligible for our principal forgiveness on our funds because your median household income's too high. But the EPA uh, is getting ready to open up their application period for monies that will become available in July of this year and that would be perfect timing for us and what i'm likely to ask council to consider at that point is borrowing enough not only to do the water plant but also to add in the loop completion and the bottleneck elimination all in one that completes all of the major water projects in the village doesn't mean we won't have continuing maintenance and breaks and things like that but it completes all the major water projects in the village and gets our system in good shape, gives us one debt payment to retire, and mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about anything but paying that debt payment and trying to get that fund healthy again. And in doing that, could we do what Lori asks, is could we pay ourselves back out of that? Could pay we borrow enough back could into we, the general Could we fund? borrow the 250 whatever? I mean, we're transferring 400 and 600 Thousand I, I think that I would investigate doing that by making that part of the loan agreement as opposed to Melissa would have to check with the auditor to see if that's can can be done legitimately normally it can't go backwards but it's certainly something we can ask okay. I know that there was quite a bit of debate that surrounded the, the electric fund paying off the bond um, just from what I had read in, in the notes and everything. I know that there was quite a bit of back and forth trying to get that to even occur. So yeah, it definitely have to be ran by the state auditor. Okay. Okay. And another thing we've raised a couple times is a transfer from the electric fund, a one-time transfer to the water fund. 
You you can't transfer. You'd have to get a court order, and you'd have to pay it back. You have to pay it back. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I knew about the court order, the payback. I wasn't. Yeah, you can't, I heard yeah, that. you can't. You you have to get the court order to be able to do it, and you have to pay it back. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess then I would ask, given that you guys are both nervous, and <laughs> I'm nervous. Karen's nervous. I'm, I'm nervous. nervous. Um, I. Would it make sense for us to delay approving the budget and go back in and looking for things that we can cut? I don't think so at this point. I, we cut 3% off all the operating off the top before we even started. We cut, we threw out all the capital projects and started from scratch with what just, just what we thought needed to be done this year for the enterprise funds. Um, the only special revenue fund I think that we really did anything out of was uh, well we did parks and rec because mm -hmm. that's healthy fund mm -hmm. but that's because it was healthy yeah. um, so I mean I really don't think there's much else to cut there the problem is it's just the second or third year in a row that it's happened that it's come out of the general fund to support the other the other funds the general fund supporting the water fund has been the biggest the biggest downside to this budget but um, just because council approves the ordinance to make those transfers from the general fund into the well there's um, two water projects there's the transfer that's into the water fund for 225 and that's to support half of the consultant fee and then the OPWC loop completion grant there's a transfer for 405,000 and like Patty said, if we can get that financed all together, um, that could, just because the transfers are in there and council authorizes them doesn't mean that they have to happen. And I won't do it until I know that they absolutely have to happen. Mm -hmm. So that is the one right. kind of so safety if, net. So if we find that funding before she needs to make that transfer, then what happens is we just come back to council, you pass another ordinance that says we're not gonna make that transfer. So. And, and I would suspect as, as um, aggressive and, and conservative as as staff has been that they will continue throughout 2015 to be conservative and to, uh, uh, on spending and to, to analyze everything if they can get things done cheaper you mm -hmm. know just because it's budgeted doesn't mean we have to spend it that's correct so I mean there's clearly there's certain commitments just to salary and those kinds of things so um, but I think we're 2015 is going to be a year where we will be have to, we will be needing to have broader discussions because it isn't sustainable our budget is not sustainable right now mm -hmm. so one more uh, I know I think we've <coughs> talked about this before but in terms of sort of the standard practice for what should be in your general fund was that do I remember that number is five percent of the overall budget no, 25. Uh, 25 25 I think what does the what's the state auditor that's not, that's say? not what Ohio mean. well I had I had read that the standard was five percent right that's what the Ohio Municipal League talked yeah. about so it I mean I I think that that's probably the that bare minimum low. Right. oh my god I mean that, that seems really low most communities have uh, have more than that mm -hmm. I mean, well it, it maybe not it's how that's how yeah. nervous we are about it because it, it's just too low yeah so what, what, what John John Courtney says we shouldn't have less than what did he say was it 25 percent or 15 percent um, it was 25 percent of a year's operating costs of the years in operating. our electric fund mm -hmm. okay. as a cushion so <coughs> anything else from council um, this is a second reading a public hearing I will open the floor to public comments please come up to the microphone and state your name and keep your comments to three minutes Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table. Any last comments? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Asplund? Yes. Housh? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Intro? Yes. Okay, next we have um, first reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2014-30, authorizing the annual transfer of funds and declaring an emergency, which means we will only have one reading of this. Judy? 
Whereas Ordinance 2014-29 was adopted moments ago to make appropriations for expenses of the Village of Yellow Springs, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31, 2015, and whereas the Village of Yellow Springs Charter Section 41 requires the transfer of funds be approved through an ordinance established by Council, and whereas this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure, measure necessary to preserve the public interest and provide for a special emergency in the operation of Village Services, such emergency being the urgent necessity to provide for legitimate expenditures. Now, therefore, the Council <coughs> of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that Section 1, in accordance with Ordinance 2014-29 and Charter Section 41, the following transfers of funds for fiscal year 2015 are authorized. These are general fund transfers out to First Street Fund in the amount of $496,392, Parks and Recreation Fund, $301,000, $874, the OPWC loop completion grant $405,000, police pension fund $73,877, $73, the widow's fund $1,500, the electric fund $69,438, and the water fund $225,000, making the total general fund transfers $1,573,081. Section 2, the finance director is hereby authorized transfer the funds as they are certified and available. Section 3, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency ne measure necessary to preserve the public interest and shall take effect at the earliest date permitted by law. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Patty, or I guess Melissa, um, just describe this. Okay, what this does is this just authorizes the transfer of funds per the ordinance, um, the, the budget ordinance, um, and the numbers match up with the uh, transfers out of the general fund to this piece of legislation. Um, the street fund and the parks and recreation fund, as well as the police pension fund, those are, there are always transfers that exist because the amount of income that comes into those three funds is very minimal. So these are to support operations and um, any capital projects that would have been uh, committed to. Um, we talked about the OPWC loop completion grant in the amount of $405,000, that's the village's portion, and um, there's gonna be a $400,000 grant, so that ties back into the budget for a total cost of $805,000 that will be spent out of that fund. Widow's fund is the annual allocation, just in preparation for the legislation that'll approve that in November of uh, 15. The electric fund transfer is to, it's the last payment for the Bryan Center debt repayment. And then the water fund is that half of the consulting fee that we talked about earlier. So those are the transfers outlined. And the Bryan Center debt will be paid off at the end of 2015? Yes, I believe that that's the last payment. How many years? That, How many know? years was it? I believe it was three. It was 13, 14, and 15. Yeah, I think that's right. But total, I mean, it was a, like a 20 year, mm -hmm. 20 or 30 year loan, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just it the was last a very long portion <laughs> of too the long. debt was refinanced by the village. The bond was paid off in the village, the actual electric fund paid for it. So general funds paying them back instead of paying a bank. Um, any other questions, Council? Um, this is a public hearing. I'll open the uh, floor for citizen question or comment. Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to Council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Housh? Yes. Sims? Yes. Aspen? Yeah. McQueen? Yes. Winter? Yes. Okay, next we have. Um, Public hearing, reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2014-31, authorizing a transfer from the general fund to fund number 353, the OPWC round 25 grant and declaring an emergency. Again, this will be a single reading. Okay, whereas village fund number 353, the OPWC round 25 grant has been running a negative fund balance of $8,126.65 because it was discovered that the village's portion of the match was not supported by the general fund and was erroneously expensed from the grant fund, thus creating the negative fund balance. And whereas the state auditor has directed the village to transfer these monies from the general fund to the OPWC round 25 grant, and whereas transfers of monies from one fund to another are authorized under Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.14 upon a simple majority vote of council when transferring from the general fund. Now, therefore, the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, Green County, hereby ordains that. 
Section 1, Council for the Village of Yellow Springs hereby authorizes the transfer of monies from the general fund to the OPWC Round 25 grant fund in the amount of $8,126.65 in accordance with Section 5705.14 of the Ohio Revised Code. Section 2, this Council finds and determines that all formal actions of this Council and any of its committees concerned and related to the passage of this ordinance were adopted in an open meeting of this Council and that all deliberations of this Council and any of its committees that resulted in these formal actions were in meetings open to the public in compliance with the law. Section 3, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure immediately necessary to preserve the public interest and for the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the village. Wherefore, this ordinance should be in effect immediately upon its adoption by council. Thank you. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Melissa? Okay, so this one, this was a bear for me um, since I started. Um, there were three grants that were associated with the CBE, and all three of them were very poorly documented within the finance system. What occurred was the ODOT grant, which was the road widening, had a $103,000 fund balance in it, and that project has long been finished. And the OPWC Round 25 grant, as um, is outlined in the ordinance, had a negative fund balance of approximately $8,100. The Army Corps of Engineers grant also had a negative fund balance of seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars. No, it was $13,000. So I, along with Denise Swinger, sat and dissected every single transaction within those grants to try to figure out what the real outcome within the finance system should be because we knew how much should be in the Army Corps of Engineers grant. It should not have a negative fund balance. It should have had about seventeen dollars to $18,000 in it. The Round 25 grant referenced in this legislation should have been a zero balance, and it was running a negative balance. And the ODOT grant should have been a zero balance as well. So basically, this piece of legislation, we found that the general fund did not pay its portion of the match for this grant. So this is a transfer from the general fund into this grant account that will zero it out since it's complete and it will keep the expenditures within the fund that they belonged and make the grant fund whole. I also worked with the state auditor in, uh, in regards to that ODOT grant for $103,000 and I had figured out what should have happened and they agreed with me and they had sent me an email just last week telling me that I could do fund balance adjustments in order to zero out that $103,000. So that resulted in $72,000 being paid back to the general fund that was expensed out of it in error. So part of that $72,000 is supporting this $8,000 transfer so it's not putting us in any worse situation than what we were already in. We're going to end up in a, a more positive situation than what we thought. And then $31,000, the remaining $31,000 of that $103,000 grant went back to the Army Corps grant, making it whole and it leaving it with about $18,000 left in it, which is where it should be. So this piece of legislation is just one piece of a bigger pie. Um, so this was, this was all just basically clean up. So. so will we have legislation for those other two matters? No, they were, I wanted them to remain within the 2013 audit because those grants were final, the, the ODOT grant of 103, with the $103,000 fund balance, we got the final letter from ODOT in 2013 saying that that grant project was completed and over with. So I wanted it to remain with the 2013 audit. So the state auditor, because they haven't completed our 2013 audit, went ahead and included it and told me to just go ahead and do fund balance adjustments for the beginning of 14 and it'll be included in the 2013 audit okay so it was part of the audit luckily sounds like a lot of work uh, that, I, great job yeah I was you and Denise I was just gonna say that the the hours that Melissa and Denise <laughs> spent trying to figure this out and get it straightened out uh, were enormous and they did a, a great job on it so, so. and I think I you know, I don't want to necessarily come down on our staff, but this is really, this was about our finance department. This, I would assume, not doing record keeping. This isn't about anybody else connected with the project other than our finance department. Would you agree with that? I agree with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And it, our ex, our old finance department. Um, any other comments or questions from council? 
citizens? I, I did oh, misreport sorry. this to when I wrote my note because I didn't understand this. It, when there's something this complicated, I, I would find a little a little memo with the ordinance. I realize you were out of town, um, but perhaps under normal circumstances, mm -hmm. if we could have just kind of an explanatory, yep. because I thought this probably had something to do. Since I saw OPWC, I was thinking it must be the loop completion. Oh. The so I, 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 I misreported it to people because I didn't understand what I was seeing. So it was very helpful to hear this tonight. And so if we could just have a memo uh, yep. under normal circumstances, yeah. just explaining what we're seeing, that would be great. Thanks, Lori. Um, this is actually as a public hearing, so I will open the floor officially um, for public comment. Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council <coughs> table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. <coughs> Yes. They come from the same. They have a dumb look on their face. I'll try to be more up there. House. Yes. <laughs> McQueen. Yes. Asland. Yes. Winter. Yes. I am gathering that m both Melissa and Judy have colds because uh -huh. I feel so bad. Both of you are talking all. Uh, I'm probably going to get blamed for that because I'm I'm still <laughs> fighting the one I had three weeks ago. So yeah, it's I, her fault. I Absolutely. got blamed the last time everybody got sick. Really? So. Um, next piece of legislation is. Um, Resolution 2014-55, <coughs> authorizing the village manager to contract with HNTB for consulting engineer services on a design build water plant. Okay, whereas the village desires to obtain the services of HNTB Corporation for general engineering, <coughs> engineering review, design, bidding, and construction management services, and whereas HNTB Corporation has engineers licensed in the, state, in the state of Ohio and is otherwise qualified to perform engineering, engineering review, design, bidding, and construction management services, and whereas a form of, a, of a, an agreement is attached here to and incorporated here in is Exhibit A for the provision of said professional engineering and other services. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that Section 1, the village manager is authorized to execute a contract with HNTV Corporation in form substantially similar to the attached Exhibit A in an amount not to exceed $448,537, contingent upon approval by the village solicitor. Section 2, this resolution shall go into effect at the earliest period allowed by law. Thank you. Um, Patty? Um, HNTV was the firm that um, that council chose um, when we did the had the presentations from the water plant consultants um, in negotiating the contract with them um, they actually started at over five hundred thousand dollars and um, we got it down in in our negotiations to the four hundred forty eight thousand five hundred thirty seven um, in doing that um, I feel comfortable with the level of services that they're providing that we will get the product that we're looking for. Um, council will see that attached is a scope of services with specific um, specific tasks attached to it. You also have a rather lengthy Excel spreadsheet that lists tasks by their grouped um, within that Excel spreadsheet as part of the proposal. Uh, it is a not to exceed contract um, so if say we get to the softening portion uh, we do a public meeting and at that point council decides that we want do not want to proceed with softening and we're not going to have softening at our plant the costs associated with the softening portion within the contract go away okay so that's why they're grouped by task on the Excel spreadsheet to give you an idea of what each part of the, the contract entails and how much it's going to cost. Um, you know, this will entail our staff doing part of the, um, the general oversight um, of some of the tasks, but it, it cut down, what we cut down was the number of oversight hours that we felt were unnecessary to be performed by an engineering person as opposed to our staff. Um, I had Johnny and Joe with me for the course of the negotiation, so they are both well aware of what the contract entails and what their responsibilities will be during the process. Um, and everybody involved uh, on, on both sides feels comfortable with what we've come to an agreement on here. 
Uh, Patty, I had a question about um, I, the, I love the detail as far as the deliverables and timeline and everything. And I know that there are community meetings planned for the softening. There are, yeah, among other things, but yeah. So, yeah, I was going to ask, it wasn't as clear to me what there, other. There are some staff meetings in there um, that have to do with the technical design aspects <laughs> of the plant, like where we're going to site it, what specifically we you know how we want to see it designed there are other public meetings in there to get public input as to different processes of how to remove the manganese and the uh, and the um, iron okay um, so there are some public meetings in there and there are some staff meetings in there some work like work session type of things um, so when it talks about uh, in those other meetings other stakeholders we're, we're going to be I guess pretty liberal about Mm -hmm. okay. So, so based upon what you just said mm -hmm. in relationship to are so then, what it, what it's saying here for phase three, the, the softening option is thirty six thousand three hundred ninety dollars. So if we decide not to do softening, that thirty six thousand will drop off correct. out of the contract. That's correct. Okay. Um, I have a question mm -hmm. regarding that um, on page three at the top where they talk. The About page three of the contract or the scope of service? Uh, scope of okay. service. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about softening options, and they list three lime softening, iron exchange, and pellet softening. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that term being used pellet softening it's there was something called acid something around it's weak it's weak, weak acid. cation weak acid cation okay. it's the that's same it. thing okay, okay that's right. what that is the one that we we did decide to drop off membrane for a couple of reasons yeah, number okay. one it's I'm the most expensive right. uh, and the least productive you so, a lot of yeah them. so we one of the ways that we one of the ways that we did cut the cost during the negotiations was we discussed whether we wanted the membrane because we were fairly certain that that wasn't the way we wanted to go by the time Johnny and Joe and I talked. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the ways that we did cut that cost was to eliminate that as mm -hmm. a, a, even investigating that. Okay. So. Thank you. And, and that weak cation, that's what they're, that's what they're experimenting with in Englewood, right? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. And I did, and Joe is going to go visit a couple of different plants that do softening in different ways to see that. To see that. And, and, didn't, and the, didn't they also mention the presentation that it's, it's, a form of lime softening, but a, a cheaper, easier. Okay. I would I would also ask if if um, if possible when with some of these visits, if there might be council members might be able to do that. Absolutely. That was I, that I was can, really valuable when right. we went to Springfield. Right. Springfield. Um, I do want to tell council. Um, when when Mark Rogie came to bring me the final contract last week, um, he did tell me. <laughs> Remember, part of the discussion was how these engineers move from firm to firm. Uh, <coughs> Mark is leaving HNTB. <laughs> um, Sam is staying. Lindsay is staying. Justin is staying. So out of the four people that were going to be that were here, we're still having three of those people. They're not going to add anybody else. They're, uh, Sam is going to step in and do. Um, both his and Mark's oversight of this, and I'm perfectly confident in that. Um, but but Mark was the one that was was Mark the was presenter. The, he who was, was the one the, who was the construction guy. That right. I really liked. Okay. But but Sam's a, Sam's a good construction okay. guy too, and we do have Johnny. Okay. So, um, any other questions, comments from council? Questions, comments from citizens? Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We didn't get a motion. Yeah. Oh. What? Oh, we didn't, didn't get a motion. We didn't get a motion? I don't think oh, you gosh, did. sorry, guys. Um, so moved. Second. <laughs> okay. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> okay. Last, we have resolution 2014 60 authorizing the village manager, manager to contract with Grindline to make improvements to the village skate park. Okay, whereas the village is interested in making improvements to the skate park at the John Bryan Community Center, and whereas it is in the interest of the citizens of Yellow Springs to make such improvements, and whereas the village has caused specifications to be written and advertised for the 
$1,000 bids for the above work. All bid is a single project. And whereas after distributing said bid specifications to all interested parties and having received four bids, an apparent lowest and best bid has been identified. Now, therefore, the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, has here been resolved that. Section 1, the bid for making said improvements to the skate park at the John Bryan Community Center is hereby awarded to Grand Line of Seattle, Washington. Section 2, the amount of the Grand Line bid is $35,000. Section 3, the village manager is hereby authorized and directed to enter into a contract to construct the improvements as designed with Grand Line. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Um, Patty or Brian, one of the two of you. Why don't you start, Patty? Um, we received four, actually five bids because American Ramp put in two options. Um, so we received five bids from four different companies. <coughs> um, three of them were 35000 one of them was 34700 and something, I believe. Um, the uh, Public Arts Commission had asked Brian, myself, Matt Housh, and A.J. Warren to get together and look at the proposals and, and make a decision and a recommendation. Um, Brian and AJ, or Matt and AJ are both skaters. Um, and Grindline sent us this master plan and the things that are in green are what will be included in phase one. Um, we like several things about Grindline. Number one is that it's a concrete surface. Um, number two is that everything that they put in here can be expanded upon. Uh, and number three is the fact that they gave us uh, a master plan with a rendering that we can now use to raise funds to complete the master plan in sections. And so um, with all of those things being said, um, we'd like to recommend Grindline be awarded the contract. Yeah, and a couple things. Uh, we, we asked a lot of questions about just the construction process. Would they be able to do everything on the current platform that we have out there? Uh, and all those questions we felt were adequately answered. Uh, CT Consultants, who put together our bid package and has helped us through this process, we've been really impressed with. They really get what we're looking for aesthetically and also the community input we got from skaters. Um, I do want to emphasize we confirm that that master plan is based on the 120,000 that that number came up before if we were going to build out the whole park. Uh, and I know the skating community is already looking at grants and sponsors to see if that would be done because um, obviously we, we are not committing village funds to the other part. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, we were just really impressed. I guess I should mention that Grindline is considered by skaters to be the premier uh, designer and, and uh, creator of skate parks. So right, and, the and what most well-known skate parks in the nation are Grindline. And we could find no complaints. Uh, anytime there had been any like hairline cracks, they fix it right away. Um, so we were excited that they actually put in a bid and we're gonna have an amazing skate park. I mean, just, just the pieces that we're doing uh, are gonna really put Yellow Springs on the map. So I didn't totally, because we did, our rendering was doesn't have a green. Yeah. green. Right. Yeah. And so, so I did so explain, I, I didn't, I don't understand these two end pieces. Right, so what happens is if you look at uh, the phase one, the quarter pipes that are I guess going to be on the, uh, what, north and south side. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I see. Okay. We're just going to have those pieces, but then they can seamlessly develop that, Rest those zone. curves. Okay. And I know that there was some discussion about how much um, some of the skaters like some of the equipment we have. Is this keeping any of our existing equipment? Uh, well, you know, the master plan, I, I would guess, is, is a long way off. So... Um, I mean, we'll see, but in the in the short term, we're keeping the three uh, large pieces that are on the uh, west side of the park, mm -hmm. and yeah. So this is just this is just what's currently the skate park. This isn't this isn't looking at moving into the into the tennis courts nope. at all. Right. Nope. Okay. So that that's on us, so and that I guess okay. So right. So the smaller pieces that are there now, I think uh, you know Jason had a plan for moving those into part of the tennis court. So I think you know we won't lose those pieces, right. um, but those could be the smaller kids park. 
However, Matt and AJ mentioned that with this design, they think it's going to be great for all ages and all skill levels. Uh, a lot safer. There's more, you know, kind of casual uh, inclines and things. So we may not even need to do that. But but I, I think you know that could be something we look at more later. And and one of the things that AJ specifically mentioned was the flow. Yeah. The flow of how it works. None of the other. Um, designs presented had the flow where he said you could easily go from one obstacle to another to another you know back and forth to the features without actually ever getting off your skateboard if you're that good right the other thing that was included in the packet was their approach as far as using uh, local materials right. and labor which I was really impressed okay. with right. so a large percentage of you know this is all poured it poured in place concrete yeah, so a large them. percent of the concrete the, some of the labor they even talk about using our lodging and, right. and how much is going to go to our local businesses uh, while they are doing the construction um, and one picture we didn't include it but there's this neat picture of like 20 guys out there because a special thing they do is they sand down the concrete so that uh, you know as far as impact it's a lot safer so at some point we're gonna have a huge crew out there mm -hmm. sanding it all down and making it really nice so right. I thought yeah, it was a really good presentation it yeah. was nice. They didn't figure they were flying people in from s too many people in from Seattle. They actually right? sent in. <laughs> yeah, they actually apparently this. send in a supervisory crew, and but they have technical people all over the United States that travel within regions. Right. Mm -hmm. so. I think the other thing that's really impressive is for as small a budget as we had, thirty-five thousand to get five bids. Right is incredible um, and I think part of that is these are companies that want to work with Yellow Springs and and you know see how we can develop our skate park um, I think a couple things just generally about budget um, this money is coming out of the parks and rec fund mm -hmm. which does have a relatively healthy balance mm -hmm. and this is a project that we have been discussing and promising for years now so um, it really is a commitment that we've made. Um, things are unsafe right now, and we can't operate parks that are unsafe. So, um, and 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 after um, there were a couple of years there, where we were trying to encourage involvement from the users and the skaters and the community, and I think that that it didn't, it wasn't as it wasn't as embraced. Everybody's really stepped forward, and this has been a really nice collaborative project. So, yeah really appreciate it um, any other any comments from citizens sue <clears throat> I'm probably going to sound like your annoyed grandmother but when the skate skate park first was introduced as something that might happen it was introduced by an interested group of people and their promise was if they could have the, pay, the skate park there, it would not cost the village anything. In terms of lessons learned, I would charge you with the responsibility to, if such a proposal comes before you again, to think down into the future. Mm -hmm. Is this something that can reasonably be sustained by interested people? Or is it going to eventually require government support? And I think that it was a mistake not to have that conversation when it was first introduced years ago. Secondly, I am assuming, but I would like reassurance about how much uh, the village's uh, liability insurance is impacted by having this facility how much is it impacting the premium that we pay and are we adequately covered against the possibility that somebody could sustain a very serious and long-term care needing accident and is the village protected against that financial hit if that were to happen and I'd like some reassurance yeah. about that. Yeah. I can't speak to exactly what the premium increase was as far as when the skate park was developed and, and went online. I can tell you that it is covered and we are covered 
liability wise for that we review our insurance every year to make sure that our coverage is adequate and we work with with the insurance you know inspectors adjusters different folks to make sure that we are adequately covered and so. that's reassuring but there's a cost associated Ex with there that. is and I mean, that needs to be in future mm -hmm. considered as well and I and I will say that the um, the funds that were raised um, independently by the group um, they are going to turn what is left of those funds over to the village um, I actually encouraged them to maybe keep them and, and make it the base for the rest of their fundraising to, so that they could move forward with the rest of the phases so we kind of were working that out but thank you mm -hmm. thanks Sue any other comments questions Brian I was just going to say, so should we amend this to say five instead of four bids? It was four companies. Okay. So. Right. Okay, see, um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, now we're at the place in the agenda um, where we hear from citizens about items that are not on the agenda. Um, you need to come up to the microphone, state your name, and um, comments are limited to three minutes. Okay, seeing and hearing none, we'll bring it back to council table. No special reports. We'll move on to um, old business. The first um, item of old business um, relates to commission language, streamlining commission language, and I think that there is another document um, related to responsibilities that is included in the packet. Uh, I think that that's been Marianne and Brian working on that. So turn it over to you two. Well, this is something that Brian, what we have in our packet is something that Brian put in the packet. Um, mainly uh, based on the city of Dublin. Dublin's. Um, I have some questions. Well, I'll say what my questions are. One. One is that there, there are a lot of points here. Some of them, some of them are very easy to uh, say yes or no to. Like it says one says, I will be present for required meetings. That, that, that's a yes or no. Some of the others that says, um, I will be a positive role model and actively promote public confidence in village government through my actions. That's open to interpretation. As, as our others going down here um, I'm not totally comfortable with this at this point uh, one thing that I would like is if we're going to ask Commission members to abide by something like this I think council itself needs to abide by these things um, and um, I don't think we should ask volunteers to ha have a higher standard than council members um, so I, I really see this as a work in progress and I some of the pieces that I support and others I, I don't. And as I say, if we're going to have commission members sign this, I would like for council to have something similar. Oh, Brian. Yes. Take it away. Um, can, I guess, can, yes. Um, w would you mind, you know, if you decide to redo it, you know, red or yellow line, what things you you don't like so we'll, we'll have an idea what we're yeah and I just have I've been out of the loop for about three weeks so that's why I'm sort of belatedly coming in after this is right um, so yeah I, I guess I'll add a couple things uh, first of all this this in our mind is kind of the the first step of I think many things that we'll look at in the standardizing process and uh, I think Marianne and I both agreed that this was maybe the most uh, the best place to start something that I think would be helpful I know that a lot of my Commission members have asked for clarity about their roles and responsibilities um, but it's definitely meant to be uh, a start of the discussion for us and also um, I wanted to see if we felt good enough about this draft if we could start passing this around to the commissions so that we can get as much feedback as we can uh, from everybody involved um, so that that's I guess my goal tonight is to kind of see is this do we feel comfortable enough with this to start disseminating it and getting feedback well, it sounds like uh, Marianne has some 
significant reservations. I don't think there's a big rush on it. So I would say, um, why don't we get have another discussion of it with yeah, we need to I would prefer the two of them. I mean, yeah. wouldn't you working together on it? Yeah, that would be fine. I I, I would. I you know I think I I am not great about you know all these you know a lot of a lot of rules a lot of detail. Um, I do think that most of these in our oath of office that we probably a lot of this is covered. Um, I think it's I think you know council is clearly representing the village. I think that personally my I mean one of my goals in something like this would be for commission members to understand that they are representing the village that they're that they're appointed by council and that they're representing the village and, and you know how that's how that's articulated um, you know certainly can be in any number of ways um, and and I think that you know it, it is possible that there should be I don't know that every commission member should should take an oath of office but there probably is something I wonder if that, that they should be signing something related to conflict of interest I mean I think that we do that when we when we take office <coughs> so I wouldn't mind maybe you or mm -hmm. one of the two of you looking into what is required so um, Dublin does swear in all their commission members okay. and what they do is uh, well they do two things one is they interview commission members in a council meeting so mm -hmm. All, they all do that and then uh, once a month they have a swearing-in ceremony uh, so you know any new members can come and get sworn in um, which I, I, I think is a great thing I mean I think it's you know it, it, especially we're using our commissions actively now and and there is a lot of responsibility and it's great I mean I think that participation has, has been really helpful <coughs> I mean, I think that, that that those are those are decisions that are huge. I mean, that is that is you know changing dramatically changing how we've treated boards and commissions and how we've approached it. So I think it's going to take a lot more discussion. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think if you guys just work on this, okay. that would be good. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Any comments from citizens? Okay, um, next is an eGov update. I think Brian's going to do that also. Yeah, so uh, it, we haven't, uh, I guess, been, uh, eGov hasn't uh, been implemented as quickly as I think we originally thought. Um, and uh, Why you don't know, you explain what eGov e is? Right, okay, so eGov is our new website, uh, which we were hoping could get implemented this year um, but you know these things do take time and it's been a busy year for everybody uh, so we wanted to sort of regroup and I asked uh, for a timeline just to see where we're at uh, I guess the good news is you know we're looking at if we can keep to the schedule uh, a March launch date um, the advantages of eGov uh, we've talked about before it's going to be a lot easier uh, for citizens to participate to get knowledge of what's going on in all the commission meetings there's an agenda builder where you can um, link documents that are related to that topic so that way if, if you're coming in for a particular issue you don't have to print out the whole packet unless you want to a um, lot of great features uh, they work with almost 2,000 municipalities so they have a very user-friendly website one of the reasons we moved to this direction was that it was uh, the process of updating the website was often slow and so this is also user friendly to the extent where anybody that has the privileges can just type in like you were typing into a word document and make those updates uh, so overall we're really excited about it we hope that also we can ultimately build a platform where it's easier to do uh, online billing uh, easier to view our meetings online and that sort of thing um, so I think at this point I, I just wanted everybody to kind of see where we're at uh, I guess uh, also see how staff feels about following um, this timeline and, and you know where the challenges might be so I don't know Patty if you um, have any actually we're kind of ahead of it great already because um, I what I did was I wrote the basic departmental information um, blurbs 
for most of the departments. I shipped them off to the department heads and said, make your changes, except for the PD. Um, I said, make your changes and send it back to me. So we've, we've been going back and forth, and we've primarily got most of the information for the different departments already ready. And I, that is number eight, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the um, the changes that were submitted for the home page design that that's already done um, so we're down to creating the secondary design we're waiting on Nicole to do that um, there shouldn't be too much trouble turning that around within a few days once she gets it back um, you know we'll review it in-house council will review it um, but um, then we'll be ready to uh, approve that design and add the content so I actually think we're in a couple of areas already a little bit ahead Great. of where that And I think Ruthann sent a bunch of pictures today. She did send a bunch of pictures from um, the ones that we had taken. Everybody had chosen their different ones, except for Brian, who couldn't decide. So there was like this voting thing going on. Um, <laughs> but um, I finally chose Brian's picture, so Good. we're stuck now. Um, <laughs> but. Um, she did send those off actually I think yesterday or okay. Friday and so we're um, we're ahead and great a little bit and I think I had already provided her with um, some yellow photos. springs photographs right. with village absolutely those were on the promotional those, photographs. those were on the preliminary design that came yeah. through right. so and she does make a note here that if we have that content piece ready to go that we can look at something even earlier than right. mid-march which would right. be yeah, it's, excellent. Uh, yeah I actually uh, most of them are done I just um, I worked on Joe had sent me his stuff and I changed a little bit and sent them back to him today right so okay any other comments questions uh, next we added uh, charter review uh, short charter review discussion um, we haven't had a charter review um, I think in about seven or eight years it's something we should be doing minimally 10 years, five, somewhere between five and 10 years. The charter, pardon? I thought the charter said every five. I don't know that it said, does it say that? It says it has to do it. Oh, okay. does it say? No. Okay. Basically what it is is our governing document. It is, it is the document that governs how the village operates. Um, and things change when we did the charter review last time it was because we needed to update our charter to match current state law <coughs> um, I'm sure that that there will be similar things that we need to review again um, that'll be one of the things we review um, and just going through it ourselves see if there see if there are things that we want to change about you know some of the things we've laid out in the charter you know um, Lori was there anything specific you wanted to mention about it you, um, I mean, one thing that I believe should be changed, um, just because it's difficult, um, is I the Planning Commission right now requires that one member be from the township. I think it sh it should be open to people from the township, but I'm I'm not convinced that it should be required to have one seat from the township. So that's not it's not consistent with any of our other commissions mm -hmm. so the, the status is that we actually I I mean boy how long ago did we put out the call for commission members? two months um, a, a well, while ago I think it was longer it, than that. people haven't been the the resumes and interest haven't been flooding Judy's uh, computer but I do <laughs> no. believe we have five now I do believe six, we have fact, right? five yeah. or six people now that are interested um, so we will be um, starting to look although something we did talk about earlier our earlier executive session discussion was about um, new council new solicitor for the village and that person will really need to kind of guide us through the the charter process so um, we probably be, will be waiting until we um, we have a new solicitor or a new or continuing solicitor before um, we really launch into that um, so probably mid-February right um, uh, I, we should be well that, yeah you're right because we yeah. will make yeah. the decision yeah. at the beginning yeah. of February mm -hmm. um, but, and then, the, yeah. but well. the, the two people that uh, uh, told me that they would are uh, willing to work on it have been reading it and so forth there to get oh, good. So. I would I would make the suggestion to to counsel that um, because as we'll see in, in my report, if we do the uh, presentations that we talked about on the 28th, 
uh, of January. By the time you get someone hired and get it negotiated, it's going to be into March. Right. Um, so the information has to be all done and ready to go by August to get it on the November ballot. Isn't it sometime in August? Yes. Yeah, we need 90 days. Right. And, and so we gonna, may want to consider going ahead and letting the committee start with some preliminary I revisions. Think, uh -huh. Yeah, I think I think they can get started. And right. We may have a new law yeah, director. We, we, we've got an attorney here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, okay. Um, so, I mean, I'm. So then maybe at the next meeting, the first meeting in January, we could have the. We could have the legislation seating the. How many how many people were we going to seat? Were we going to seat five or? I think it's the. We, we said five. I think initially. And do we have five or six. Um, I think we have six candidates, six. and but we we do, do need to do interviews. Interviews right? are I yes. think required. The, yes. Um, so could we target maybe the second meeting in January? I think that so we that'll easy. give us time to do interviews and then the fir then they could start meeting at the beginning of February. Okay. Who who wants to do the be the Well, I thought well, I thought Jerry and Ryan had yeah. already yeah. decided. Okay, I'm sorry. And I guess then I the other would be I, is the clerk does the clerk need to be I mean the manager would be involved and probably the clerk mm. also would be Yeah, we'll get together. Could you, could you speak about what the requirements for people on this other than I being other than being a resident, I don't know that they're no. But no. she means what are they oh, going time, to be expected well, to do? Like More the expectations. No, no, no. I mean, what are their quali What is their background? Yeah. What are you looking for in terms of skill sets? Or it was sent out in the, in the announcements a couple of times. I don't have it here in, here in front. And of it was in the newspaper. <coughs> um, but in general, the uh, village resident. And I don't know that there was a necessarily level of awareness about about government, some yeah. kind of background in um, public policy, if possible, legal background. What was that kind of? So spectrum? legal and public policy backgrounds are a plus, but we left it pretty open to you know just people that you know are, are you know residents are familiar with how village government operates, and so so we are looking for a diverse group. Any other questions, comments? And so I guess related to that, if if there are still people <coughs> interested in applying, um, there's still time. And then, so if you are, send send your letter of interest, email or mail to the clerk, and um, she will disseminate it. But I think at this point, it all of those will go to you two, and you'll be setting up interviews. Right. Yeah, because at the not the last meeting, but a couple meetings before we had asked uh, council members to uh, think of some folks. Mm -hmm. well, so that's kind of what we did. And you might want to go ahead and set a deadline for people to apply so that you can get your interviews in. I mean, you're, if you're going to appoint them at the meeting on the 20th. I think the deadline, I mean, should we say January 5th? Yep. The first meeting in January? Uh, is that going to give you enough time? I would say the, I would say I mean, the end of the year. Yeah, okay. personally. And then, Judy, can we put it in the paper one more time? Sure. Okay. And do we have it clearly? Is it on the home page? I don't know that I've seen it in it, that it, scroll yeah, bar. It was the last time I looked, it was over to the right on Is the it, side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so we're saying uh, by the uh, end of the year? Mm. Close of business on the 31st. 31st. Can, can I ask us a question? Mm -hmm. How many people are you wanting on this committee? Ideally. Five. Five. But we'd like to be able to choose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next item is um, the art cans and um, those were installed. Two sets. Yes. Were installed. And um, a third one to uh, to come soon. Uh, actually, Beth and and I guess first of all, I'd like to thank Beth Holyoke and Katie Seidel for doing such an amazing job. Uh, I mean, they generated this idea, they came up with uh, the concept of repurposing our old trash cans, beautifying the downtown. And um, one of the things that we had agreed on is, is a pilot of three sets. Uh, each uh, set is one of the mosaic art cans with a recycling can that's clearly identified, so that's not a, 
a problem anymore. Um, so we've basically gone through that pilot. And I guess one of the things I wanted to talk about tonight is do we want to move forward? Um, and uh, I got a confirmation from Jason today that there are 15 cans left that could be repurposed. So that would essentially mean seven sets. Um, are those are are those ones that have that are now on the street, or are there 15 more that are still at the farm? Uh, counts both. So the ones that aren't done on the street plus the ones that are still in storage. So yeah, originally there was talk of 26, but Jason told me about six of those could not be reused, and then uh, we've already used, I guess five or six at this point so but we did talk today and he went back and looked and said there are 15 that that he's so 15 more 15 more right with 15 un, 15 that haven't already been right re worked yes and that mm -hmm. that and that are in good enough repair that we could do it um, the cost per set is 1150 <coughs> so if we proceeded uh, to finish and basically line downtown with the cans I guess that would be eight thousand and fifty I, I I mean one concern I have is is that are those are there enough cans I mean you know is because we already have you know we've already realized that that the recycle can needs to be placed right next to the trash can I mean it's great that they're that they're clearly marked so hopefully people won't get confused. I think part of the confusion with recycle is what actually is recyclable and you know I don't know that we can and and that's maybe something that that environmental commission can take up something you know I think maybe we should actually even say just glass 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 and cans or something because that's really all that's recyclable um, okay. On a rate, you know, I think what happens is that people put styrofoam food containers in the recycle can because they think they're recyclable, and that pretty much well, obliterates that. We might be able to alleviate that because part of the problem, like you and I talked earlier today, part of the problem is that people throw things in there that aren't recyclable. But maybe if on the recycle cans we actually go you know, glass mm -hmm. paper right. plastic you know yep. that kind of thing maybe that we can just add Tom that to Clevenger recycle. is he knows that this was his job at the University of Washington in, um, in Washington State mm -hmm. for years and he knows signage on and what works and what okay. does not work we'll get with him then and so see. I would strongly yeah. recommend that they consult with him mm -hmm. So okay, so so there we have you know so so we're putting two together, um, and again I you know so fifteen plus we've got six out there. Three sets. Technically that, four, so eight more right. because we've got the current cuisine. So we're so talking that's probably about not enough. That's probably not enough trash cans for Xenia Avenue. We're talking about 22 trash cans. That's so probably 11. not enough for both sides of Xenia Avenue. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess at some point, Jason or somebody kind of needs to lay them out, and make sure we've got enough where they're going to go. Right. If there aren't enough, then what are we going to do? Are we going to bring back the ones we just took out? Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I feel like there's a little, there's a few questions um, right now about having a planful way of going about it. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to see us have some time to get the recycling ones identified well mm -hmm. like Lori was saying with Tom's help and see how that works I mean because we they aren't there right now as far as well I mean, and that's part of the problem which we'll we'll talk about when we get to this the uh, the solid waste which is our next topic mm -hmm. about the problems that we're having on on Xenia Avenue and Dayton Street with public hands but what do you mean they aren't there right now well my understanding was we were going to have the really nice ones that uh, right. Katie mm -hmm. and Beth have done and the recycled one beside it they there will they be they will marked. be sets right and when I was downtown I wasn't noticing that there was a set of both together right they the way Jason placed them for the unveiling um, last Friday 
is not the way they're going to stay. But so I'm saying so. I'd like to see them put down there right. and try to see whether the recycling thing works. I'd like right. for us to work on the recycling thing before we put up more paint. Well, I mean, I think the timing is great. I mean, we've got, you know, there's five months, five to six months, I think, before the really busy time will hit. So it'll be good. You know, hopefully over that period of time we can, we can figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and one of the things that Beth and Katie had, had really recommended, and, and they were searching out alternative funding sources for these. Um, one was the, to consider going to the Community Foundation for a grant, a partial grant, which I think if they maybe went with the village or even if the village um, put a grant in, that that would probably be successful. And then um, the possibility of, of actually having businesses sponsor, um, sponsor them. So, I mean, I would like to look at some alternative funding mechanisms for those also. Uh, they, they, they did come to the, the uh, Community or the funding, mm -hmm. but community foundation. Community foundation, but the proposal at the time was turned down. But they would be amenable, mm -hmm. uh, say, to a, a different type of proposal. But mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the initial one that came through was, was was turned down. And one idea is, I mean, we have, you know, put forward thirty four hundred for those first three sets. So. I mean, the village has you know, supported match, the project, right. yeah. So, I mean, I guess knowing that we have fewer that we have fewer cans, I would like um, I would like Jason to kind of take a look at the at the placement mm -hmm. at the distribution and figure out are we going to need more? I mean, are, so are we going to be in a position where we actually still need more cans for Xenia Avenue? Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually if you do all of the aggregate cans that we have left, you'll have enough to do Xenia, but you won't have enough to do Dayton Street. Right. right. Which we had already anticipated, right? right? We took the best of the current cans and right. moved those over. <clears throat> so do you want to move into the solid waste just to explain um, the um, situation? Sure. Um, we had, uh, Council had gotten a letter, which um, Lori brought up during correspondence from Sue, about her concerns um, and how environmentally unfriendly our current collection contract is with Rumpke and I agree with her that there need to be some significant changes when we um, spec this out next year um, I, I strongly disagree with the number of days that Rumpke's in the village and the number of trucks that they have and I think it can be streamlined um, there was a question that Karen brought to me today about the recycling and <coughs> It's a little bit confusing. If you put your recycling container out at your home, it is collected in a separate truck from the general trash, is taken, and then it's sorted at the recycling center. However, because folks throw so many different things in the public recycle cans that don't belong in there, Rumpke just notified us, um, Jason said last week, that they are picking up the Xenia Avenue and Dayton Street cans and they're, they're just going out as regular trash whether they're marked recycling or not because people are so inconsistent with what they put in the recycling cans. So when someone says our recycling is being commingled with regular trash, yes and no. It is if it's picked up on Dayton Street or Xenia Avenue out of our public cans, but it's not if it's picked up at your residence. If you put recycling out at your residence, it is picked up as recycling by the recycling truck and it goes to the recycling center. Um, we do have Rumpke trucks in here every day of the week, which I think is crazy. Um, you know, I think that um, when, I, when I do write the specs for the new contract, it's going to say, you know, a, a minimum number of trips into the village. I, I don't know why it can't be cut down so that they do the entire village within one or two days with fewer trucks. Um, you know, this, this village is approximately the same geographic size and a few more households than my last position. We had two CSI trucks come in one day a week and they were in and out in half a day. 
So I don't know why we can't have something similar, even if they come in two days a week, in a, you know, in here with a recycling truck. You know, I, I don't know why it can't be streamlined and save all those trips back and forth. So that'll be something that is spec'd out. Is actually something Jason and I had already talked about um, when we got your letter. Uh, so there are ways to minimize the environmental impact, and we are looking at that. Um, the contract that we currently have runs through um, August 31st. It is my plan to get the specs written and advertised by uh, mid-June so the contract can be presented and signed sometime in July to take effect immediately upon expiration of the Rumpke contract. And just to be clear, when you say that they are commingling downtown, what that means is that downtown trash is not being recycled. That's Public correct. trash. When Public they commingle, it's they're not taking it. It's not going to be recycled. That's correct. Um, so it, but it is there. Was, I remember at some point it was it it was told to council that they could that they, there was commingling, and I think that there was there was the belief that trash was being commingled with recycling and they were taking all of that to one location and going through it what they're I mean they're just commingling the recyclables and then they take that to a recycle location and go through they pull out the plastics so you don't have to separate you don't have to separate your plastics from your glass they put all the but but they can't you know, if there's a bunch of styrofoam, if there's a bunch of food, if there's just a bunch of trash in the tr in the, in with the recycles, that's trash. That becomes trash. Mm. So Which that's why the marking of right. the cans. You know, that's why so many now. You know, will have just a circle in the top of the lid, so you can. There's only a two or three things you can put in there. Right. So you know, I don't know if that's something that we could consider if those lids, if those can tops have been purchased? Um. Well, Jason was purchasing as many as he could um, for the new cans out of this year's budget, um, okay. the big dome lids. But again, I think it goes back partially to the markings as, as Lori and Mary Ann were talking about to try to make that clear and make it, you know, put the cans side by side or close in close proximity so that people know they don't have to walk, you know, 50 yards down the street to get to a recycling can. Okay. So, um, you know, all of those things, it, it, and if that doesn't work, we can always try to figure out another way to make that work and get the folks to recycle it, the public cans. Right. But, I mean, I, I can see Rumpke's point for, you know, we can't go through this with half-eaten food and everything else and then try to make it be recyclable. Right. But they are, what they are picking up at private residences or businesses that put it out separately, that is picked up as recycling taken to the recycling center, sorted, and recycled. Okay. So, uh, and I have to believe with those green and yellow cans right. that people really, I mean, it's not clear. I mean, I, I assume right. you're supposed to recycle where the Rumkey sticker is, but right. it, I mean, it's not clear. That was very poorly done. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so hopefully if we do all these things together, it'll alleviate a lot of the problem and we can get back on track. Okay. So. Okay. Um, well, apropos to, um, whether the Environmental Commission is involved or the Energy Board. And I'm sort of thinking maybe once the Assistant Village Manager is here, mm -hmm. I would be happy to talk with him and or you about is there a role for either the Energy Board or the Environmental Commission. In terms of um, the number of times the trucks come in and out that's sort of more of an energy board thing I think because that's about the energy that it, it's it could be either right group, it's, it's energy but, but the emissions that they're putting in to the air yeah. because of all the trips are, as uh, as um, Lori said Tom Clevenger is probably the biggest expert in the village in terms of if we're going to be looking at can we reduce what we put into mm -hmm. the trash can right. we put more into recycling or can we even reduce both of those things mm -hmm. and that that's sort of another aspect mm -hmm. uh, for, for example if people one thing would be to have recycling picked up once every two weeks or once a month or garbage picked up once yeah. every two weeks or once a month I have my or, recycling I mean, there are picked lots up. of options that we can be looking at right I have my recycling picked up every two weeks and I usually run out of space in my big roller dumpster because I throw so much in there mm -hmm. but. Yeah, me, me too. And and, and the other, and the other thing, when we when we when we went from the village picking up trash to 
hiring a service, one of the, the promises that council made to the villagers was that your trash day would not change. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let's see, but yeah. that's. But that, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, maybe a uh, promise we can't. You keep can't keep that, that in right, perpetuity. But that's, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how we. Okay. Can't we, say we, that. we got well, yeah, that. I just, uh, yeah, I, th I just think it's, it's not as efficient as it could be, right. and, and it, it probably actually adds to the cost when you think about it, because I'm they're sure bringing trucks in here every right. day. So. But I would say, at least in my household, uh, I have three cans plus a. Uh, Recycling, mm -hmm. and if you went to two week pickup, then my trash would be. Oh, it wouldn't side. be two weeks. It could yeah. be. It could, yeah, it could be. They pick up every week. It just may not necessarily be this section on Monday, this section on Tuesday, this section Correct. on Wednesday. It yeah. might be these three sections on Monday and these other three sections on Tuesday, and you're done for the week or something like that. You know, so I think it could be way more efficient than it is right yeah. now. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we know the timeline that Patty's working on, so. Mm -hmm. No, I was just saying I think we can yeah. move on. Um, council Chambers, um, we it's a, it's a project that we're hoping to move forward on. We have uh, money encumbered for 2014, <laughs> um, and we were moving forward. Marianne has expressed some concern. Um, yeah, I mean, like, <coughs> if you look at uh, this semicircle, whatever you want to call this curve, I can easily see everyone uh, on council and uh, Judy and Patty. And I think that's important. I mean, I've seen council chambers where council people are all just in a line. And I remember, and Jerry, I don't know, maybe you remember this, but when they first re redid the Bryan Center and council moved over here, I think council was sitting like this and there was not much of a curve, and they didn't like it, and I think they tried cutting down the table and rearranging them or something. But where were you when we made the decision I, to go forward and I, where we had where design I? drawings? I must, I must have thought of, yeah. maybe plus, I wasn't here. The, I, the, I mean, I never, I'm yeah, sorry. If I could say, <laughs> when, and and, and uh, Brian looked at that, the, the curve that we made, and we, we kind of set the chairs out to see what the angle was, and, everybody could see everybody so okay so you know, yeah. so that that was you know and and, uh, and i'm sure I mean, that uh, we, we have talked about before we actually cut wood and so forth uh, uh, if we go with brian he was going to make a little mock-up to make sure that we right. got the right, the right angles and so forth. So right so the, the picture doesn't really give it it doesn't really show i think this it, this uh, one might show it a little bit better because the curve is a little bit more pronounced in that but i this one doesn't really show i don't think very just well just to clarify we're talking about brian carlson yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, right. not a building <laughs> but that was one of our concerns because when we had a straight you couldn't see it by okay. well, so I mean, and and if, if I mean if we have any more of a curve that's as large of a curve as we can have and still have room in council yeah. so right. if if council decides that that isn't a, 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 a enough of a curve we're gonna have to keep the table here the way there, it, the way it is. Uh, what's the reason for the step up in the back to, for the wiring yeah for the wiring for the microphones yeah, everything would be hidden and, and and there's also a desire. I mean, this is this is going to be a single-use table, so it's going to be for the mayor's court. Mayor's court, and he does have a need for to sit up a little higher. To sit higher. higher. For protocol. Um, it it won't be ADA compliant. Yeah, we're putting a ramp. There's in a, no, there's, there's going to be a ramp. Okay. right here on this side. I believe okay. this would be a ramp no, to get up this side and out. made sure that the uh, wheelchair can fit back there. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Which is why if you make it any more curved, you won't have any room out here for chairs. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and if somebody is sitting in a wheelchair, they'll be able to see over the... Yes. yes. It's, it's, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like right yeah. here. It's, it's, okay. it's okay. literally yeah. that, that much higher. Yeah. And part of that is also, so for electronics, you know, mm -hmm. we want to be able to plug in and mm -hmm. have that kind of ability. So part of the reason for that yeah, wall is to little, yeah. allow yeah. electronics. Uh -huh. And we talked about maybe, you know, should the wiring go down and we decided that's too much of a pain people have to be down on their hands and knees so all the wiring is in that little mm -hmm. okay. raised wall 
All right. So is it then council wants me to move forward well, with that? And, and, and so, so Jerry, I understand you to say that you and Brian set out some yeah, yeah, arrangement. Out, yeah, just to make sure that we got got enough of a curve. Well, and there, and there, there are people pieces. People on the ends can see each other. There are pieces of tape on the floor that are kind of laying out the parameters. I think most of them are gone, gone now, now, but yeah, that's probably any of the blue tape you see on the floor relates to. Relates to that relates to obviously the seats. Those the two aisles, relate so to the so aisles and the seats. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, I, if, if you say it's good, I'll accept that. Right. Okay, I have my drawing and my estimate back. No, are you sure? So under new business, um, I asked Judy to put in a, the 2015 retreat, uh, assuming we will have a retreat. Um, you know, maybe just start, I don't know that we need to schedule. When, Judy, when was last year's <coughs> retreat? Was it in February? No, no, I don't think so. That's February 13th. It was cold. Oh. <laughs> right here, February 13th. It's cold. March, May, February. It's all yeah. So, I mean, let's yeah. be thinking about a date. Um, I would think, especially since he's new on the job, we might want to include John. Of course. Um, we may even want to consider including the new solicitor just because. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think so. Yes. Um, so, I would say. March. We should probably do it after we've got a solicitor mm -hmm. in place. So, so we're probably March looking at the March, earliest. Yeah. Okay. Maybe do April. Have a, do you have a break in March that would make you more available then? I'm on sabbatical. <gasps> <Woo -hoo! laughs> wow. <laughs> Starting as of. Yeah, I don't That's really. Why you're I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't, <laughs> have, shouldn't have said that in a public meeting. That's though. why you're smiling I actually do so want much. to not be here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case y'all didn't catch the word, she said sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's all right I'm gonna say vacation here in a minute so, so um, and then I also thought you know we usually one one of the things that, that Judith was always very um, disciplined and, and thought was always important um, was revisiting their goals at least a couple of times through the year and I have to say that that isn't something we did this year mm -hmm. I feel like we had an awful lot of major things on our plate so I don't know that we formally did but I, I think I we've used like this we've I was amazed when I went through yeah. how many of these yeah. we've dealt with right I mean. so um, and look, number one, hire an excellent village manager. <laughs> See? Check. Depends on who you talk to. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think last year my recollection was that actually this was one of the things we did during our retreat, I believe, was establish the goals. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, um, I'm, not even, I'm not even suggesting that we go through these. It's, you know, uh, let's get out I of But I do think I would like for us to go through these at some point before we establish our 2015. Oh, sure, yeah. Right. So yeah. would we do that during the retreat? Um, I think we should probably, public. we could probably go through them before that. In um, a public session? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. in a regular session. Mm -hmm. um, well, and as we do, I think it would be good to look at what are some ways that we can be more accountable for the goals. Maybe have fewer goals or every quarter, make sure that we look at them. Um, well, I, maybe as a starting point, we can all go through and see which ones we've already met. Yeah. And mm -hmm. okay. talk about the ones that maybe and, we and need. Well, I mean, here we are. On and, and we actually did put responsible proof. people. Yes, we did. So, <laughs> yeah. I, and I know, I see my name is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. we did the first four. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in either did or doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I counted it up. It was close to 75 percent. But yeah, I mean, you know, we actually even did number five. We didn't yeah, actually no. do it. I mean, well, but yeah, it's, yeah. I mean there's a resolution at yeah. least. Some of them are also. We we're talking about to, sidewalks. Yeah, that's um, on to be scheduled to yeah. talk about and. So. Sure. Come up to the. This is your grandmother right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for warning us. You are representing the villagers, the citizens that elected you. And I think it would be incumbent upon a council 
to check in with the citizens and see what our goals are and get some input from us. But before I think you go that's to deciding goals. But I think we do that. I mean, we do it all in public session. So, and we do it with legislation. So we've had. But we could we could do a um, we could put this on our next agenda and and make a sort of formal. You have goals that you think we should be doing. Yeah, some right. some format so citizens know that they can make it uh, a suggestion mm -hmm. and then yeah know that it will be considered with all of the others yeah I mean I don't know if how our new how interactive if the, what kind of an interactive element there there may be on the new website even um, for there's a couple I mean we could also use that thought bubble mm -hmm. that you know I mean that's another tool yeah we actually so. haven't used that and we said we were well we, we you know and everyone has emails we all mm -hmm. have email that I mean, they could send it to any one of us. Right. That I think I what we just need is a formal, I think. Invitation. Sue's, yeah. uh, Sue's advice is good, and uh, that a formal kind of invitation soliciting pe uh, people's input yeah. on goals is an yeah. excellent idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I think that's good. Um, so when we, we I, you know, well, maybe we'll put this on the agenda for, for the first or second meeting in January. Mm -hmm. To have a more thorough discussion of the of how we did on 2014 goals. Um, okay, um, turn it over to Patty for the manager's report. Uh, all right, as you can see, I, I will be um, issuing my disciplinary findings to uh, Sergeant Penrod within the next couple of days. Uh, once they are issued, I will notify council. Uh, of the formal decision as well as Ms. Fannin uh, will be notified and uh, at that point we will move forward from this incident and uh, <coughs> see what we can learn from it and uh, try to do better. As Council knows there are continuing problems with sinkholes on the Morris Bean property. This is something that we did have a letter um, in on the tables tonight and I also had we also had the letter from Vicki Hennessy. Vicki and Joe Bates and I have met twice about this and we are currently trying to set a meeting with Morris Bean to discuss possible solutions to this problem. Um, er, anything they want to, to discuss, we're open to discussing. We have a couple of ideas. Um, we have talked to the EPA to get their input on what they think would be acceptable and we're going to move forward from there to see um, how we can solve this problem permanently so that we don't have to keep dealing with the threats to our groundwater and our drinking water source. Um, HNTB we've already talked about. Um, the loop completion project um, has been approved by the EPA. Um, it is currently being prepared for bidding. We are um, also going to bid out the bottleneck uh, elimination as an alternate and we're doing that so we can get a ballpark price on it as well as see if we can get the funding to go ahead and do that as we discussed earlier so when you see the bid come out it will say um, water loop completion but there will also be an alternate bid in the package for the bottleneck elimination um, and do we have the drawings for that project? Yes, we do. Johnny okay. has them. I have them okay. for both both pieces of it. Yeah, I remember seeing them. Um, I have contacted RCAP and they are going to start work on our rate study so that we, they're going to send me a, an agreement so we can encumber that money out of this year's budget because it is there and we want to go ahead and do it. Um, we also have the proposal from John Courtney um, about the electric rate study which is in your packets. So uh, my question to council is, do you want me to move ahead with this? Um, electric rate studies are way more complicated than water and sewer rate studies. And, and I think it's better to have someone who's familiar with an electric utility to do that. And Wayne Cannon from RCAP readily admits that that's not his forte. And so, Patty, can you just articulate a little bit about w what's more complicated? Yeah, it seems like. It, it has because we have specific contracts that we have to meet our obligations to in order to, um, you know, to keep ourselves financially sound. That that comes into 
Um, the rate study, the fluctuating energy market rates come into it. I mean, there are just the, the supply of that. Mm. that and I, I would assume that usage also matters, right? I mean, it, like it does. night and day. And it, it does, but uh, overall, it's, yeah. it is, you know, just a general picture of all of the other factors that go in there that you don't have in water and sewer. Right. I mean, we have all of our own water and sewer records that we we're going to turn over to Wayne and he's going to say, okay, your average monthly uses is this. It goes up in the summer, it goes down in the winter. And Wayne, I've worked with Wayne on rate studies before, so that is complicated enough. Right. But then when you start adding in the fact that we have these contract obligations we have to meet, the fluctuating energy market, the way our demand changes, all of those things make it way more complicated on an electric utility. And I noticed that the proposal talked a lot about unbundling so looking at those separate pieces correct all the, and that would be the pieces we've talked because it doesn't matter I what time it, you use water it'd right be a fine idea to, to yeah, do this and, and, so yeah. bring it, John it'll be it'll be for bring it brought forward as a resolution mm -hmm. or, yeah so mm -hmm. let's just save the discussion till then I think mm -hmm. okay. and, and he's been our, our consultant our rate consultant for years mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay a reminder to everyone about the um, Council interviews for the chief candidates, um, which is on Thursday. We talked about that a little earlier. The Sutton Farm building, um, the money for the building itself is encumbered, and I do have, we got three proposals to do the work of actually constructing the building. Um, the lowest and best is $14,880. We do have that money in Johnny's account out of administrative services. $14,000. Uh, to, to put it up, yeah, and, but that's with that yeah. th that's with our guys doing some of the work mm -hmm. so we're going to go ahead and, and encumber that and all of the money for that will be encumbered out of this year's budget mm -hmm. and it was 32,000 to buy the package and it's 15,000 to put it up so oh, okay so 30, about, yeah. 15, right we're right. talking about less than fifty thousand dollars to get that's that up very good right. um this evening, uh, we shortlisted <coughs> our uh, legal RFQs, and I will be asking uh, Bricker and Eckler, Frost, Brown, and Todd, and Coolidge Wall to make presentations, uh, public presentations before council on January 28th, uh, 2015. Might wanna fix that. <laughs> At six o'clock, seven o'clock, and eight o'clock. Um, anyone who would like to attend is welcome to do so. And last but not least, um, oh, the Verizon Tower. I do, I do have two things. The Verizon Tower, you have some pictures in your packet for the Verizon Tower. It is supposed to be done by, uh, completely done with um, construction by the end of the year. And online, I'm saying by the end of January. They said that by the end of the year too, but I'm not betting money on that. And the last thing is, my house is done <laughs> and I'm going to be taking some time off to move <laughs> so um, it'll be a little bit disjointed um, I'll be off this Friday I'll be off the 23rd and 24th I'll be here on the 26th because Melissa and I let everybody else take off on the 26th so she and I will be the only two in the office and then I'll be off um, the 29th 30th and 31st and that will finish out my vacation for the year and hopefully I'll be living in the same house as my husband by the end of the year. <laughs> well, welcome so. to Yellow Springs. Yes, and welcome. your cats. Right? And my yeah. cats. I make cats. <laughs> so are, are they all going to cry? I mean, are, are they going to be oh, traumatized? I, I, you know, I just can't imagine what the drive up here is going to be like with Will seven they, cats in, in the back of car? my car oh. for an hour <laughs> and a half. <laughs> but, you know, I figure if I ride up by myself and there's nobody else talking to me and I just don't play the radio and I just drive eventually they'll shut up and go to sleep and <laughs> having we'll a bunch of kids I can tell you you're dreaming <laughs> yeah I, just getting them to the bed is always an adventure but um, but um, I, I'm I, they we were supposed to get this I haven't heard from Chuck but we we're supposed to get the certificate of occupancy on Friday the bank was, was supposed to inspect today so I hope to close on my house and get moved in so I can get all my appliances in mm -hmm. all that fun stuff so we're looking forward to it Patty thanks I'm <laughs> looking forward to it so Judy <laughs> clerk report all right so this is the last meeting of 2014 got your little 2015 reminders out of the way 
here and ready to proceed with. I, my begging works. We actually have some charter review folks. That's I'm totally excited about that. Okay, and I'm going to just read this because I am genuine in my feeling here. So I wanted to just say that I'm honored to work for such a cohesive, thoughtful, informed, and compassionate council. And extremely glad to have an outstanding team of people here at the village. Um, it's not always been the case in my employment life, and it's a, a genuinely a great pleasure. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Judy, yeah, thank you. Uh, on the calendar. Yeah, thanks, man. Oh, yeah. Well, now this is. Now that's it. Oh, wow. I, I already <laughs> cried at home. Um, <laughs> I cried at home. I scheduled that. Oh, and the sarcasm comes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to talk about the schedule quickly. Um, Lori, I remember you had said that we should plan in the, I don't remember if it was in October, but a meeting that we plan would not have because that would allow for August. Judy to go. Oh, is it August? Mm -hmm. okay. August. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to forget so, that. Yeah, okay, so that I think would be we what? should. First, August meet. August. It wasn't first or me. second? Which would you prefer? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I, I, it was me. I think we should have one month, well, one meeting. One? I don't care. Well, because it was. But also, we thought about that would be a time for you to <coughs> you immediately go. take a vacation. I remember. Either the last one in July or the first one in August would be. Okay, so August it's August either August Monday, August July twenty. Why don't we do the first one in August then? Okay. It's, that, it's always a bit of a bottleneck, and then and it's hard for it just makes it. it I think I've got it. Uh, okay, let's let me bring up something mm -hmm. um, that our schedule. We're talking about um, charter review amendments. Oh yeah. Going oh. to. I will be here. Um, go. Going. They will have to go to the board of elections. I don't think that. I don't that think it's going to happen that fast. Well, it's got to. It's got it to. It has to go the first week of August. Wow. So, I don't know. Well, but here's the thing. Council will have to pass them at the July meeting. Right. So if you don't pass them, it doesn't matter. Whether okay. We have the, so that, okay. The August 3rd meeting yeah, it's or not. The, you get the so, we, so we, but that we've got to be on, tar on target for that. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll just have to wait till the May. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if it has to wait till the May of the next year, it waits till the May. I mean, I want it to get started. Mm -hmm. Right. But, yeah. If it doesn't get done by by in time for the November election, it's sad, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. It, the only thing I will say is that there will be a new council, and I think that's that's the concern uh, that a new council will reverse a lot of work that's been done. Well, we can. Well, if if, if they not. if they start if they convene quickly and start talking, I think we'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. And then. Um, HRC is having a January meeting. We uh, are doing it January 8th, so thus it'll be the second Thursday because I know that January 1st is. Yep. And thank you, Judy, for your heartfelt <laughs> appreciation. We we do have a great staff. We are we are yeah. lucky five lucky people here ourselves. So Definitely. thank you all. Um, okay, standing reports. Lori, planning and bike. Okay, so planning commission met on um, last week, Monday, uh, last Monday, and we the and we approved uh, three eighteen Phillips Street conditional use for executive for the Morgan Family Foundation. Um, we approved an alley vacation for Antioch College. It's basically a an alley that somehow was under the curl gym. So it must have been <laughs> platted like in yeah. 1910 or something. I don't know. Um, we also approved um, an alley vacation request from Rose Pelzel that involved Rose doing research into the minutes of council meetings from March 1879, March 24th, 1879, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. was the date. Um, so that was quite an interesting thing, but it was, we were just confirming a council decision from March 24th, 1879, <laughs> um, which is perhaps, that may be the farthest back we ever get to go. Um, and then the other two right-of-way vacations that Antioch was asking for 
we were referring to staff and also ensuring that we had correct notification on those so we had a busy meeting mm -hmm. and Green County I don't think you attended that I did not and I was not able to attend able either, to either. Um, is it it's Ken LeBlanc is their new is is our new planning mm -hmm. person um, and he did the, attend our, our planning oh did he? okay good um, so I think the next the next big thing on their agenda is um, talking to the county commissioners and staff about and considering um, are they going to go under the auspices are they essentially going to go away as a separate organization and go under the auspices of Greene County as a as a I was a, I was initially not very positive about that but I actually am growing a little bit more positive and thinking <coughs> that it will actually be a better communication but mm -hmm. there's a lot more on that to come okay Jerry wait um, I have sorry, a question uh, too for Lori yeah, oh, too. okay <laughs> the the other Antioch alley vacations where were they what were they? the, they're right-of-way vacations yeah. and they are basically you know that well one of them is basically comes off the solar array and and just about comes up to East Herman Street and one of and um, so it's it's from Quarry Street it's yeah. President oh, Street it's is, it, Street. is yeah. it President Street I think it no, might it's be the old Herman Street it's Herman the Street Herman okay Street. I knew it was Quarry, a, so basically East imagine Herman. that Herman Street goes all the way across yeah it yeah. would be uh -huh. vacating from the loop yeah yeah and then the other one and then the, the other one is basically go, the you know it used to be a street, street. kind of or right college in front of, it's I mean, I know that the, old the neighbors have some concerns about the, the mm -hmm. Herman one, so I didn't. Yeah, know. and so does I, staff. I thought any information so. that could be put out to hopefully allay any kind well, of fears. Well, yeah. would staff actually has some concerns about them too because of where our utilities lie. And I do know that Reggie met with Johnny and Jason today, but I didn't get a chance to talk to any of them about the outcome of the meeting. So, um, so it's just on hold. We'll see what 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 comes back to us basically but if it comes back to it we'll make sure that everything is properly noticed okay. are we doing nominations tonight yes oh I'm sorry I forgot I have a nomination <laughs> and she's sitting right back there how could I forget I know I'm sorry that was is terrible well yes you can, what, if you want, the new person on Planning Commission is going to be Rose Pelzel, if I have my way, um, <laughs> <laughs> if Council agrees. Um, Brian and I interviewed her um, this week. She is a self-described local government geek. <laughs> she is doing um, studying to be a surveyor. She uh, did a tremendous amount of work just on um, researching our own property, has been attending meetings regularly, and um, was originally saying she wanted to be the alternate, but with just a little bit of talking and arm twisting and her realization that she, once she learned about something, she would want to be able to vote <laughs> on it, um, she, she agreed to stand as the full-time replacement for Bill Bebko's position. Oh. We will miss Bill Bebko because he brings a lot of um, institutional memory with him so um, but Rose is the five generations her her relative was you know in these minutes of the meeting <laughs> from 1879 her ancestor so um, she uh, brings a lot of uh, uh, strong roots here in Yellow Springs cares a lot about the village yeah and I just wanted to add because I felt like I kind of grilled you in that interview and I was very impressed uh, I think Rose is really articulate and um, I also really like that uh, you have the empathy to think about folks residents that come to Planning Commission I, I think that adds a, an important element and uh, I underscore everything that Lori said uh, I'm very impressed and excited to uh, have you nominated so is that a motion and a second I move. Yes, yeah, second. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Welcome aboard, Rose. Yay, All right. <laughs> oh, and actually, oh. you know what? I just oh. remembered in my pocket. <laughs> Brian is the king. Here he goes. I've got one of our village pins. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for reminding me that, Brian. Oh, yeah. It's been so long since I've had to do one of those. <laughs> oh, and I've got a couple of, of uh, applicants for the John Strewing position. He's been wanting to step down for some time. So um, I am, I'm looking forward to setting up those, uh, those meetings later this week. It's a busy Great. time for me right now. Great. Um, uh, Jerry, we have Village Mediation and Community yeah. Resources. Yeah, Village Mediation, of course, they've been going on a meeting when needed. Uh, community Resource, uh, they're getting ready for their January uh, business meeting, the election of officers. In the uh, Library Commission, uh, Patty met with them, along with myself. Uh, at the meeting in uh, November, and uh, we went over the um, building plans mm -hmm. and so forth, and mm -hmm. they were they were all very very happy. And uh, you have a set of minutes from uh, from the folks. Okay, that's it. And uh, to tag off of Jerry, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention with human relations is we just approved a conflict resolution training that uh, a Dayton mediation does. Actually, one of our residents, Janet Mueller, brought that. And uh, it's going to be a partnership between uh, HRC and Village Mediation. We're very excited about that. It's, it's a type of training that our village mediators don't normally do. So we're going to look at how can we build some capacity in that regard, and um, we're excited about that. Uh, more to come uh, early spring. Um, I also wanted to mention that the Human Relations Commission, I had talked about our retreat last month, and one of the things we decided from that retreat is to have a meet and greet, since we're doing lots of those, and I think they're great. And um, what uh, we're planning it for January 29th. Uh, a main purpose of that is to uh, really talk a little bit more about um, how requests for support work uh, so that people understand what the HRC mission is uh, from council and what kinds of projects we can uh, support um, and also get a chance to, to meet the very hard-working HRC team. Uh, so there'll be more information about that, but I wanted to let everybody know. Um, we also, by the way, are proposing to add a uh, citizens' concerns component to uh, our meetings as well, which relates to uh, part of our mission, which is to be a sounding board for issues in the village. I, I think that's a great idea. And we have tightened up our format so that we're going to stick to time limits because we have been having three hour plus meetings, and, and that gets a little rough. So. Um, Community access panel, uh, very excited. Where's my little piece of paper? Um, if you didn't see this on the table, we have our survey uh, to meet our mission to assess how the community uses community access and, and what we can do uh, to continue to improve. This will be an insert in the YS News this Thursday. So one way uh, is to put a stamp on it and mail it in. Um, you can also grab the copies out there and drop them off um, in my office is in fine. Patty's office. Yeah, to Ruth Ann, and uh, there will be an online version of this uh, Survey Monkey, and that URL or that link will be in the YS News this week. So lots of different ways to participate, and we're hoping to get a lot of feedback about content, about how we can leverage the internet better. We've been broadcasting meetings on YouTube. We want to do more things with that regard. And ultimately, we may lose our cable franchise. So we also need to think about, uh, with the merger and everything, uh, what we can do in the future. And, and you know that may mean going totally to the web. And uh, Public Art Commission, uh, I included something in our packet. This was an idea that was proposed by one of our local very famous sculptors, John Hudson, to have we still aren't sure about the name, but uh, right now it's, it's being called the Village Enhancement Award. And the idea, and, and I'm actually, I uh, want to see if council approves this to move forward, is uh, to seasonally award a business or a resident uh, who's done something really special to beautify the village. And those can be current things, those can be older uh, projects that have been around. Um, 
And I think this is a great thing for the Public Art Commission to do. I really liked when the idea came up. Um, and so uh, this is sort of our outline proposal of what that could look like. And if this looks good to council, then I think we are going to move forward with sort of finalizing that and a plan to award the first one uh, this spring. And it would be a traveling trophy? Kind yeah, of so it's, it's kind of fun. So we're talking about like coming up with something that sounds like an Emmy, you know, so we can have like a cool acronym. So that's why we're still working on the name. Have a traveling trophy, also a certificate. We want to talk to uh, YS High School artists about maybe helping us with design in that regard. And uh, so I think it's it's fun and, and deserved and you know we really have a lot of beautiful uh, things that our residents do that we should recognize. So sure. Would yeah. this be something that people would then nominate? Yes. So the plan is that for the first one uh, the Public Art Commission members would make the nominations um, so we get it started and then subsequently yeah we would solicit uh, nominations from citizens. So anyone that's a resident of Yellow Springs could nominate. Marianne? You mean the Art Commission would both nominate and choose the For first the first one? one, we thought, just because it's new and to get it started. I'm not sure why they could, you couldn't just go ahead and, you know, I mean, I, to me it seems like the, the commission could potentially nominate every time, you know, or I don't know. Solicit nominations and then yeah, and you, make the you don't get nominations. any then. Yeah, well, I mean, I that, and that, that is, I mean, I, I think the commission will always have ideas as well um, for that. The other thing uh, I wanted to mention briefly that Public Art Commission talked about was uh, motorcycle noise. Uh, one of our residents brought this up. And um, we have uh, uh, a recommendation that came up that everyone liked was to start with kind of a soft, um, creative approach, which is to put signage at some of the venues where motorcyclists uh, stop in town, Peaches, the Tavern, the Gulch, and do something creative with the signage. Uh, I should have put your drawing in the packet, Patty. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, Patty did a, a little artistic rendering. Oh, Patty um, did a scribble on a paper. Yeah, but we had actually, this was great, similar to when we d dealt with the uh, street musician issue, we uh, invited bikers to come to our meeting to get all perspectives, and we had some great input regarding that and learned that the, the sound is when you have what are called straight pipes. And so, you know, we thought about something like pipe down or piece pipes or something, but, you know, again, it's, it's still uh, in a development stage. But we've already got um, uh, the owners of Peaches who said that they'd be happy to put up a sign. And we wanted to see how that works before we, you know, move to, I guess, you know, ordinance or something like that, um, and, and just see how this works. Uh, I, so. I guess, you know, I'm just thinking about the fact that, that we're basically going to private business, because this, is, this isn't signage on public property. This mm -hmm. is going to private business and asking them to put signage. Um, I guess, are there, I mean, we're just making a recommendation. I mean, is that something you had? I, yeah, I mean, I, Actually, when Christine was in the meeting two meetings ago, she volunteered to put right. it up. So, I mean, it, I think it it can be an entirely voluntary thing that it just like the buskers and asking people if they would voluntarily go out and say, "Hey, you know, you've been here for over an hour. Could you move on?" But that's all. But that's on public property. Mm -hmm. We we at least had jurisdiction. We right. at least had standing. Yeah, you can't enforce right. anything. So. I mean, you can't force them to put it up. You can right. just ask, and it sounds right. like they're okay. getting cooperation. I, just, mm -hmm. I mean, what, 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 governments what put require just, signs in businesses all the yeah. time. You must wash hands, et cetera, et cetera. But, but Patty, when you said you just made a statement, you've been here for an hour, you might want to move on. Oh, but the bus skirts. But I thought with with the motorcycles, it's it's when they start them up right. and, and right. leave. No, I was just talking okay. about the voluntary aspect of participating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay anything yep. else? Nope. Okay, Marianne. Okay. Um, the energy board met uh, this month, and the focus of that meeting was um, a presentation on um, 
a community solar project. And there were at least a half a dozen villagers in attendance. Uh, Dan Rudolph, who is on the energy board, is here tonight, and he was involved and helped work on the presentation. And Deward Headley, uh, who's on the Environmental Commission, also came to that meeting and has been doing some work on, actually, du Deward has been developing a pie chart to look at where we get our, um, our uh, electricity from. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've had a chance to mm -hmm. see it, but it's really uh, effective, I think, for council and the community to be able to look at the different places where we're getting our right. Electricity. Yeah, John has one in his presentation as well. Oh, does he? John and so I thought I wanted to do or to be able to get in touch with John to get make sure he had the information. Oh, absolutely. So maybe they just. Yeah. Yeah, if you email it to me and then I'll add him to it and we'll just <coughs> keep a thread going. Pardon? It's based upon contracts, so it's, I mean, it's I, I know, but when you, seeing a pie chart is helpful to see. Right. What's renewable, what isn't, what comes from what plant. It's mm -hmm. just easier than just seeing a lot. I mean, we've, I, I, yeah, we've got a lot of great detail from AMP, but that's, that's cool that he's. Um, but at any rate, um, there's a lot of interest, um, as evidence from our last energy board meeting, on the concept of community uh, solar, which is a way for people in the community who are not able to have solar panels on their house, or maybe who cannot afford to pay for solar panels on their house, to come together as a group and have a sol be able to get solar. So. Um, the Energy Board would like to come to the next uh, council meeting on the 5th to make uh, maybe a 15-minute presentation to come so that council gets a sense of what this might look like. And then if council approves to have the Energy Board help work on, there would have to be a, some change in legislation. And of course, staff needs to be involved in mm -hmm. both looking at this and talking about this. So uh, Dan is here. If we want to have him say anything more about this tonight. I, w I would like, um, I mean, we're going to, we're undergoing this rate study from John Courtney. I mean, obviously anybody we take off of, out of our system is going to impact the rates of the, in of every one of our users. So I would like to potentially have that rate study completed. I think John probably needs to be aware that this is on the jo horizon. John and right. Patty came okay. to the last meeting. And this, the idea would be that this project would take whatever of the 1% that's, that's been designated for uh, private, for residents to use. So it wouldn't be taking anything beyond that. Um, I think the other reason for doing it at our next meeting is because there are tax credits that are available for this project that will come, that will, that have a limited time in terms of what is that time available. limitation, do and you know? I think it's, through. It, it, it's actually two through. You might come in forward, Dan. So it's through 2016. So the philosophy of con community solar is that you, individuals actually own the solar panels, but they're not located on the residents. What it requires from the village is something called virtual net metering. So we have a net metering or ordinance. This would be something that would allow the meter that's on the panel to be subtracted from the meter that's on your house. You, you have a net out of that. The idea is initially we want to fulfill that 1% that we allotted for uh, residential solar. So Patty is looking to see what, what uh, percentage of that we've already used and then we want to try to address the rest of that well actually um, when we had the meeting we we knew we had four people that had solar that hadn't signed interconnection agreements we actually have one more now okay. that we're aware of so it it just keeps growing we have so many folks out there who are putting solar on their houses but they're not coming to us to do the interconnection agreement and they're not getting their final inspections from Greene County and the meter readers are finding those every day or every other day so we're trying to do that inventory to find out what's actually out there that we don't even know about as part of our as so, part so of the, the purpose of the presentation would be to educate council 
and the community about this option. And then council could decide in coordination with staff whether council wants to pursue doing any legislation at this time or wait until we get more information or not do it at all. But regardless, given that we have a commitment, I think, to renewable energy and there's a good case to be made for localizing some production of electric energy, including at some point, I hope, even the village itself um, getting into producing electricity, that just as an educational piece alone, I think it's worth it, it sort of also sets the foundation for the, for the future. I mean, if, if the village is really serious about becoming carbon neutral, going away from fossil fuels, we really need to set a foundation that allows us in lots of different ways, you know, whether we're looking at the, the trash trucks and the number of visits to town or community solar or wind farms or anything like that, it sets a foundation. This is just one small piece of it, but it sets a foundation so that when we hopefully move towards that goal in the future, such as ha promoting electric cars in town, actually, probably our electricity, at least for the short term use, will go up our requirements. If we can get people to, to convert from natural gas to, let's say, groundwater heat pumps, if we can get people to convert to electric cars, the the actual demand for energy will go up. And if we have a system in place where we can promote this, expand that 1% sometime in the future when we need more things instead of signing more contracts, that would be a, a much better uh, result. Generate the power locally, generate the power green, have control over it. And I, I think the meeting, I think, you know, I'm, I'm willing for that to happen sure. at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I, we have an electric system that is a business that has to be sustainable for this community. We have contracts that we are committed to. So as long as everybody understands and that Energy Board is taking that into consideration and we, it doesn't sound like we have, we don't have a deadline that we can't meet. I mean, we don't have, a, we have a, a longer deadline. We have till we 2016. Have, it, it depends on what your point of view on longer deadline is. Right. I mean, Let's not go into this because right. I sure. am really tired right <laughs> okay. now. So okay. we'll, we'll add that to the agenda. I, I don't want to go into this. We'll anymore. add that Thank to you. the agenda. Right. Okay. Um, so um, the next uh, report is uh, about the Environmental Commission. We've had our first meeting and um, that time we met for an hour it was mostly spent people just talking about their own backgrounds and getting to know each other we talked a bit about the wellhead protection plan and the importance of that um <coughs> and tomorrow uh, night. pardon we're meeting tomorrow night right yes um we are and uh, we also talked about the herbicide uh alternatives to the herbicide but there's still others so tomorrow night is still um, sort of looking at potential projects. Patty is going to be coming, as is Judy. Judy will talk about the Sunshine Law and answer Good. questions in that regard. Patty uh, will meet people, we will talk about whatever it is. Uh, probably I, I, the Morris Bean thing will be one piece because that's a critical uh, piece of our wellhead protection plan. So um, that's where the Environmental Commission is. I, as part of that, I wanted to make a request from Council. Patty had found a grant possibility that um, after, well actually Vicki Hennessy looked at it in regard to Morris Bean and felt, well it's not really going to be suitable for the Morris Bean issue, but it is something that we might be able to use when we look at the waterway that runs through the village, starting as it comes out of Dayton Street, goes into a glass farm, comes around through private property, then hooks up with Ellis Pond Stream, goes through DeWine, and then comes around the Bryan Center. What I'd like to do is look at the possibility and work with Patty and some other potential players to see whether we could um, develop a grant request that would involve um, a lot of education around waterways and clean water for 
the community and the schools, um, looking at ways that we could shore up banks along that waterway, possibly do some of the kind of things we were talking about at Ellis <coughs> Pond, sort of renaturalizing some of that area and also making some of the area available for fishing, and possibly tie in with the grant request that Tecumseh Land Trust is doing here. So I, the grants could be from 20 to 50,000. They require a match and they re require five participants. Um, and I am tentatively thinking if we did pursue it, I know Antioch would be interested. So the village, Antioch, YSI potentially as water monitoring, the public schools and Tecumseh Land Trust. So I'm just asking to be able to work with Patty and Tecumseh Land Trust and Antioch at this point to come back to council at the next council meeting to say, look, it looks like we could apply for this <coughs> grant and this is what it would be in, this is what it would involve. Sounds good to me. Sounds fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just concerned yes. when you say the mat, a match. The, yeah. It's, the, you know, that would be something that is, cr of course, critical to come back to. Yeah. It can take volunteers. Uh, in-kind services and volunteer services so that that would well be it. even that you know committing our our employees when we got well, limited. Could, do volunteers. yeah but I mean I'm also thinking about Antioch students yeah well, well that's what I'm saying you know yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's a, sounds like a pretty good partnership yeah. Yeah. project based learning you're the alternate on environmental commission aren't you yes just if you could add that Lori is the alternate. Um, big news I have from the chamber is that um, our um, street fair coordinator, Holly Simpson, is taking another job, so she's going to be leaving us at the end of the year. Um, well, she's gonna, will she stay until the end of the year now? Well, she's taking some vacation time, okay. but um, she'll be working in Dayton. Um, it's a great job. It's a great, it's a great position for her, so I'm very proud of her. Um, but it will be a huge loss for the for the community she's done she's done great work here and has been working in the village for a lot of years um, uh, let's see um, MVRPC I don't even remember what we did at the last meeting um, it's end of the year tends to slow down a little Wasn't bit. Wasn't that the open house? No yeah. the open house was was just separate um, but um, nothing nothing that's impacting us so um, future agenda items so we added so the next meeting will be the 5th of January we added um, discussion of the um, community solar do we have any we do have two pieces of legislation or one piece of legislation carrying over the personnel policy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you want you wanted legislation seating the charter review committee. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the second me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any of these things, um, any of these four five items for the next meeting? Uh, if, unless you want to do the discussion of the cost saving proposals. But well, will we may will we have a um, chief contract? Yeah, actually yes. The um, oh. <laughs> goals. Yeah, goals. Let's let's hold on the cost savings proposals. I think it feels like. So review of twenty fourteen goals. In the meantime, will we solicit the twenty fifteen goals? Yeah, we can. Just ask. You know, and we, we have talked about, we have kind of put a promise out there to the township that we are going to meet with them. I mean, clearly, and we just took, well, that Monday meeting, we decided to take off the, hmm. anyway, just something to think about. Um, <coughs> Judy, if there are other things, I don't know if there are other things on your list, your, your um, legislation, there probably are a few pieces of legislation that will be yeah. kind of first beginning of the year thing, so. Well, um, and a lot of it needs to wait for, needs to wait for uh, dues, requests, and those things to come right. in. So, and that will be um, John's first meeting. So John will, and, and will John be attending council meetings? 
Yeah, okay, so that will be John's first meeting. Um, anything else? Do you want to meet with the township on, in March? I mean, that, that is, that's the first five. Um, <coughs> Well, yeah, I think maybe that's something we can talk about. But I think I think they're they're only a couple of days. It's and maybe we do need to go ahead and just set that. Let's mm -hmm. talk about it. Let's talk. I think about we it had January set it meeting. up for another time. Yeah, yeah let's, so let's I wrote, well, Yeah, I wrote it down, and so we wouldn't forget. Yeah. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.